we welcome you to Death Valley in Clemson, South Carolina, where the first Saturday of the fall brings us an outstanding non-conference matchup. 15th ranked, the Horn Frogs of TCU set to take on a fired up group of Clemson Tigers, hungry for a return to the top 25. Very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Weekly. Happy to be alongside former NFL quarterback Danny Cannell for this one, where here in Death Valley, it looks like wet weather will be a major story for the second consecutive week. Danny C.J. Spiller, the star running back for the Clemson Tigers, he's dealing with a very painful turf toe, but he's been huge in the first three games with long touchdown runs through the Tigers' first three. He may be dealing with a toe injury, but it sure hasn't slowed him down that much. He's had a touchdown of over 60-plus yards in each of his first three games. Most guys would like to have that an entire career and here he is at three weeks with those kind of numbers. And he's the type of guy, only one word I can describe him, explosive. For TCU, Jerry Hughes, their outstanding defensive end, a consensus All-American last year, opted not to go to the pros early. He's back for his senior year. He has been huge early. Oh, Jerry Hughes is every quarterback's worst nightmare. 15 and a half sacks in 2008. He's already got four and a half this year. He's the type of off a guy that an offensive coordinator has to adjust his game plan to. You have to slide your protection towards him. You've got to help your backs chip on him. And he's really have to watch where he is at all times. Well, you can see it's a sea of orange here in Death Valley. And the weather conditions, we really don't know how bad it's going to be this afternoon. It may have kept a few people from showing up here early. It's a late arriving crowd, but before we get going today, we anticipate a full house and we are underway. And there's one question answered already. Yes, indeed, TCU kicked the ball to C.J. Spiller. And that kickoff return unit for the Frogs does a good job. He comes back and he's brought down just shy of the 20 yard line. And that is where Clemson will start it first and 10. Kyle Parker has thrown five touchdowns in the Tigers' first three games, but he struggled early in the victory against Boston College, throwing interceptions on each of Clemson's first two possessions. He's charged with trying to take better care of the football today and try to improve Clemson's red zone efficiency. They've only scored one touchdown in the red zone all season to this point. It's a, a rollout and a pass. Complete up to the 30-yard line and a first down up to the 32. And right away, they go to the tight end. And a pass is caught by Michael Palmer. And I like this play call early. You go right at Jerry Hughes. You see him there going after the pitch. And Kyle Parker does a good job hitting his tight end coming on the cross. I like, I like Kyle Parker throwing the ball early. Ford comes in motion as Clemson operates out of the strong eye. And there is nowhere to go against that defense. Spiller on the carry, and you can see that TCU defense, they are definitely stout. And at the bottom of that pile is Darrell Washington. And TCU has sent four linebackers to the NFL in the last two years, but Washington is still around. Gary Patterson says he's the most athletic linebacker he's ever had. And I like what Clemson's doing here, going with the no huddle, trying to keep TCU, you know, you can't dis uh, disguise a lot when you go uh, when you go no huddle. Parker again from the gun. And the reception is made up to the 40-yard line. It looks to be just shy of the first down. Again, they go to the tight end. This time it's Dwayne Allen. And I think a lot's been made of the tight ends helping block on Jerry Hughes. You see both of these throws, the tight ends on the right side, the same side that everybody was thinking they were going to help block Jerry Hughes, but they're actually sneaking out for pass routes, which is a great job by Billy Napier early in this game, taking advantage of these tight ends. Nine-yard gain. Clemson is 10th in the ACC right now in third down conversions. They have just a little bit over a yard to go. Here's Spiller. He's got it in more. He takes it off the left side across the 45 and spins up to the 46-yard line. And a fresh set of downs for the Tigers. Tank Carter made the stop for the Horn Frogs. And there's C.J. Spiller. I mean, anytime he touches the ball, something good happens. So I put it in his hands every time. Spiller with a five-yard gain. Yeah, he's going to set virtually an all-purpose record every time he touches the football. And Dabo Sweeney's done a great job since taking over for Tommy Bowden in midseason last year of getting him more touches. First and ten. 
We've got five wide, empty set this time. Rolling to the wide side, pass incomplete at the 49-yard line. Good defense. Colin Jones came up from his safety spot to make the stop. And there's, there's Dabo Sweeney in his first year as the head coach at Clemson. He's the youngest head coach in the league, 39 years old. And he's got a, an awful lot of energy. And, and, Danny, we got a chance to see that yesterday during the walkthrough here. On a day in which it was about 25 degrees warmer. It was north of 90 degrees yesterday here in Clemson, South Carolina. At kickoff today, temperature just above 70 degrees. Cloudy skies. It's not raining at the moment. We're anticipating rain coming later today. Spiller with a head of steam right up the middle. And he takes it into TCU territory down to the 47. Well, you can see 64 degrees, actually, at kickoff. The wind from the northeast and the east at four miles an hour. We're expecting intermittent showers, 90% humidity, a seven-yard gain for Spiller. And he is off to a quick start. And you can see the Tigers as they look to the sideline as they get the play call. Good look at Kyle Parker, the freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. to the wide side. Passes caught. That's Ford. I tell you, Dave, Clemson has come out and run multiple formations. They've had two tight ends. They've split it out. They've had five wides on it uh, with an you know, empty backfield. They've motioned it back, back to the backfield. I really like how they're giving the TCU defense a lot to look at early, in addition to the no huddle, which keeps them guessing even more. Ford's now got 15 catches on the year. That's 11 more than any other wide receiver on this roster. He is by far their number one receiving target, and he comes in motion to the short side. And they, and it's Parker keeping the ball this time. Ooh, that is a good open field tackle by the Frogs. Coming up, it's Nick Sanders making the stop. Sanders and Priest, two three-year starters on the corners for the Horn Frogs. And you know, when you look at both of the defensive backs, you know, both groups from both teams, and we've got maybe some of the best defensive backs in the entire country on the field for both sides of the ball. No question about that. Gain of a yard, second down and nine. Two wingbacks this time out of the shotgun for Kyle Parker. First time we've seen that on this drive. Ford comes in motion back to the formation. Play action. Passes caught across the 30, down to the 27-yard line. And that is Rendrick Taylor, the fullback, the senior, with a catch and the run. And he packs a load. 6'2", 265. We well, you know, talk, talking to Dabo Sweeney early in the week, we talked about Kyle Parker, how he struggled early in the BC game last week, had a couple interceptions. And, man, Kyle Parker has come out on fire. He only had the one drop ball. I think that's his only incompletion. Other than that, he's done a great job hitting guys in the flats and, the, and, and just getting, keep moving those chains. A variety of formations shown by Clemson on this opening drive. Parker on the play action. Looking to the end zone. Incomplete. And I was a little nervous as soon as I said that. I said, uh-oh, I hope he doesn't make a mistake here. But he did the wise thing. He actually, there was nothing downfield. He just threw it out of bounds. That was actually a play they ran earlier in the season, trying to set up a wide receiver screen and try to get the TCU defense to bite on it and then go deep. But it wasn't there, so he made a good decision, threw it out of bounds. And you can see from that graphic, Parker has been sharing the wealth completing passes to 11 different receivers coming into this game, and he's used four different receivers on this drive. Trips to the bottom this time. This is the 11th play of the drive. Second down and 10. And when you got a horse like Spiller, you ought to, you're going to ride him. He's going to take that ball down to the 21-yard line and sets up a much more manageable third down. And if Spiller is hurting from that turf toe injury, he's not showing it. No, absolutely not. And I think the offensive line has done a great job so far creating holes. A lot was made of the TCU defense, and I think the Clemson offense has, has responded to that call, trying to gain some respect early. Third and four, a key possession down, and Clemson is on the verge of the red zone where they've had all kinds of problems scoring touchdowns here in the early going. Parker checks out and audibles here on third and four three wide pass is caught it's Ford and he makes the catch at the 15 yard line and that is a first down Darrell Washington the tackle for TCU 
Hey, foul Parker, they had four, five wides again. Just hits Jacoby Ford right in the flat, just enough for the first down. And Kyle Parker continues to impress. I know they're doing a good job keeping his throws pretty manageable, but it's what's working right now. There you see the trips into the red zone. Seven field goals, only one touchdown. This is a, a Clemson team with a running back like C.J. Spiller. They don't have a rushing touchdown yet. Spiller bumped out of bounds, just shy of the 11. And he goes down hard. And notice what they're doing here. They're running at Jerry Hughes. And a lot of teams will do that. When you face a premier pass rusher, one of the best ways to slow him down is run the ball at him. And here they go, Spiller right towards his side and just running that power game at him. They're hoping that may be a way to neutralize him. All right, Spiller is off the field for the moment. Five carries, 24 yards on this initial drive. And Clemson has taken five and a half minutes off the clock after receiving the opening kickoff. Second down and six. One back set. Play action for Parker. Screen with some room. And a good open field tackle. As Andre Ellington, the freshman, is dropped down in space. That was a touchdown saving tackle. That was. I mean, that was a great play call, too. I really like the misdirection early on by Clemson. They run the play action. Kyle Parker does a good job looking downfield. Nothing's there. Hits Ellington. The thing about this team, C.J. Spiller gets a lot of publicity, but their backup running backs are pretty good, too. Now, Washington has been busy for TCU on this opening drive. Third down and three. A 15-play drive to open this game. Play clock inside of five. Snap to Parker. Fires it incomplete. Trying to go to Ford. Ford would not have scored. And so once again, Clemson frustrated in terms of scoring touchdowns in the red zone. He wouldn't have scored, but I think he would have had the first down. And, you know, it's an area that they've really struggled in. You know, Coach, uh, Coach Sweeney talked about it, so they had some critical errors. I didn't see any critical errors there. It's just those those are the types of throws and catches you have to make in the red zone. I mean, last week, Richard Jackson was 6-for-6, six six, and it's great for your field goal kicker, but it's horrible for your offense. You want to get touchdowns. Jackson, six field goals, as you mentioned last week, including a 52-yarder in the rain against Boston College. This one is a 26-yarder, up and good. Michael Wade, the holder. Clemson draws first blood, and look at the time they took off the clock. 8.21 to go in our opening period. The Clemson Tigers draw first blood. They march the length of the field. They don't get the touchdown, but they have the lead on TCU, 3-0. Well, the first meeting between these two teams occurred in a bowl game, the 1959 Blue Bonnet Bowl, TCU and Clemson, and that Clemson team of 1959 being honored here today in Death Valley. This is only the fourth all-time meeting between these two teams. Now TCU is going to get their first shot at the football. High kick taken at the five-yard line. Across the 10, 20. And up to the 23-yard line. Jeremy Curley on the return. He, there's been so much talk about the special teams unit of Clemson. TCU's pretty good on special teams as well. We've got a flag down. Well, I think you're going to see here a block in the back. I think uh, more than one official saw it, so it's pretty clear. This is an ACC crew working this non-conference game here in Clemson today. Block in the back, return team, number 27. Half the distance to the goal, first down. You can see Jason Teague right in the right corner of your screen there. Just, just kind of what happens a lot of times, guys get in bad position. They, they know the guy they have to block, so they still try to do it, and they end up getting him in the back. Andy Dalton, the quarterback, off to a great start. He's already led TCU to a pair of bowl wins. He's in his third year as a starter. Third in career wins. He's 19-6 and six as a starter in his first 25 games. On first down, the pass is incomplete. The pass was intended for Bart Johnson. He's completing just over 73% of his passes and at a stretch of 11 straight completions that went from the UVA win on the road to the Texas State game in Fort Worth last week. He's already thrown for over 5,000 yards in his career and only needs 20 more today to move into second place all time in that category. Gary Patterson, the head coach of TCU, watching intently on the sideline. Second down and 10. A 
again the pass it's caught up at the 14 yard line and the reception is made by Jimmy Young and there's Gary Patterson you can see 75 wins as the head coach and he's got a hundred wins that he's been a part of since coming to TCU as the defensive coordinator prior to the 1998 season and we've got a flag down and Gary Patterson's done a great job of putting this TCU team back in the national forefront last year finishing seventh in the polls overall and their only two losses were Utah and Oklahoma I mean it doesn't get Three to four mercy. Offer. Five in the back. Uh, half the distance to the goal. Four second down. Now they back them up even more. I mean, this crowd noise is going to be an issue. I know Coach Patterson said they worked on it, went inside, cranked up the noise. But you don't, you, there's, you can try to simulate it, but until you're in it and you feel the energy out there, it's just a total different world. TCU. And he's already seen the mental error with the formation. You know, those are the types of things you have to adjust to as fast as you can. TCU is averaging 55 yards in penalties per game this season. They've got two early ones. It's second and 15. And there is just nowhere to go for Joseph Turner. And another flag is down. And this one looks to go against the Frogs as well. First pass, defense number 99, 15-yard penalty, first pass. That's going to go against the Tigers, Jarvis Jenkins, who was bothered by the flu earlier this week. And the Horned Frogs decided to go with their base unit, get some positive yards, get out of the end zone. They didn't do it on the stop, and Jarvis Jenkins did catch a piece of the face mask there. And that carry was actually by Ed Wesley. And that could be a huge break for TCU getting out of that dangerous territory. We'll see a variety of backs. Now Turner's in the backfield. Here's a little flanker screen incomplete. And yet another penalty. Ryan Christian couldn't hang on. We've seen our share of flags here early on. <laughs> oh, no question. Top block, offense number 70. After this to the goal, 15 first down. Our referee today is Walter Davenport, and that chop block penalty goes against the big left tackle, Marshall Newhouse. Yep, yep. you can see him go down early on him there. Good call. First and 20. And on the keeper, Andy Dalton. And Dalton, not only can he throw the football, he's an effective runner. He's really come into his own as a runner. You see there in his first nine games, you know, was very sparse running the football. But in the last 17, he's picked it up. This year, I think he's at 40 yards a game. And that's, that's such a great asset to have as a quarterback because it opens up so many different things in the passing game when you're able to do things with your legs. An 11-yard game, call it 12, second and eight. Handoff inside. Up to the 27-yard line goes Ed Wesley, the redshirt freshman. And, of course, he had a tremendous year last season for TCU. Freshman of the year in the Mountain West Conference. And TCU just trying to gain control of the offense, you know, the line of scrimmage, that's what they're traditionally, that's what they're known for. They're running attack, rush for over 200 yards a game. They work all their backs in the game. We could see the trouble TCU had on third down conversions at UVA. They got that straightened out last week. Dalton's got it and more. He dives ahead near the 35-yard line. So the fake to Turner and Dalton on the keeper over the right side and TCU moves the chick, moves the chains. Here's a look at Andy Dalton, what he can do for you. Well, he does it all for TCU. Because he's a very accurate passer. We talked about his 73% completion percentage, which is 
unbelievable to me when you're able to throw the ball as much as he does and complete that high. And like I said earlier, when he can do things with his legs, it really opens things up. And the red-headed quarterback has two carries for 19 yards. Flips the ball outside, and there's just nowhere to go that time for Christian. And when we asked Coach Patterson about his high completion percentage, he said it's exactly because of throws like they just ran here. You know, they ran the quick, at, you know, quick play action, the run they've been working, they've had success with, and at the last minute, Dalton pulls it out, hits a little bubble screen. It's an easy completion, and it's almost an effect. It's an addition to the running game. You know, Danny, when you take a look at these two teams, they're virtually mirror images when you take a look at the tremendous defenses both teams have and the early outstanding special teams by both these units. Ball is loose, and Dalton falls on it. And suddenly what would have been a manageable third down now looks to be a clear passing situation for TCU. And what you see here is Dalton's reading the end. And when he does that, he's got to put that ball way in the back's belly before he makes a decision. And you saw there when he pulled it out and decided to keep it, the ball just slipped out of his hand. That was you know, a, the weather hasn't been an issue yet, but ball security is always an issue. That was a loss of five. And Clemson has really turned up the heat, rushing the passer so far this year. Keep your eye on the ends, Bowers and Sapp. The Bamberg bookends. Good pocket. Bat pass is tipped and caught behind the defense. And it's the freshman, Ed Wesley, Johnny on the spot, all the way down inside the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and goal for the Frogs. That pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage and a great adjustment by Wesley. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, right? <laughs> 58 yards that pass was tipped by Bowers and Wesley comes up with a huge play in this game And really the last defense for Clemson was Byron Maxwell was back there at safety and Because the ball was tipped up He just kind of mistimed his jump on the ball and they were able to get behind the whole defense power eye set for the first time deep handoff to Turner and Turner blasts his way down near the six-yard line Wesley was marked down officially just inside the 10. So it's first, they started first and goal from inside the 10. Clemson cannot get a first down inside the one-yard line. Those types of plays can be so demoralizing for a defense. I mean, Clemson's defense was riding on a high. They had stopped them a few times and made a couple big plays. On the third down itself, they had stopped them, but they come up with a fluke play. It gets behind them, and all of a sudden, here they are backed up in their own territory. There you see their efficiency in the red zone. They're tied for number one in the nation, 12 of 12 with nine touchdowns. Again, the power eye. Second and goal from the six. Play action. Dalton, the rollout, throwback, caught, touchdown TCU. Curtis Clay. So Curtis Clay catches the six yard touchdown and the Frogs are in front with a point after pending. And that was a great job by Andy Dalton finding his, his second receiver in the pattern. You saw him look to the flat strong, and he just comes back to Clay, who was running a crossing route from the other side of the field. And there were four Clemson defenders in that area. Dalton just did a great job of dropping it in there. And the extra point is up and good by Ross Evans. And just like that, boy, oh boy, TCU has not been behind much the last two years. Now they've got a 7-3 lead on the road. Clemson trailing at home 7-3. Danny Cannell, another look at the touchdown. Well, Andy Dalton did a great job here. When you run a little naked bootleg, your first guy is the fullback. You see Shivers there in the flat, number 48. But Dalton does a great job coming back to Curtis Clay, who actually was in motion. And, and a lot of times when guys go in motion, defenses kind of forget about him, especially when he's motioning away from the strength of the play. But when Curtis Clay came back across the middle of the field, Dalton did a great job of locating him. Like I said, he was not open. I mean, it was a good throw. Well, these two superior defenses have given up long scoring drives to start this game. And that kickoff sails out of bounds. So Clemson is going to start this drive at the 40 yard line. Dabo Sweeney and Kick the out of bounds. Tigers. Ball will be placed on the 40 yard line. Dabo First Sweeney down. and the Clemson Tigers have really benefited from tremendous field position coming into this game, Danny. 
their average starting position was their own 43 yard line. So they've been getting a lot of short fields. They just haven't been able to take advantage of it with their offense to this point. Right. I know Coach Patterson's probably not real thrilled with his kicker for kicking it out of bounds. But when you look at C.J. Spiller back there and you look at the alternative of what might have happened, you're kind of like, OK, I'll take it on the 40. It's not the worst thing to happen. Well, that's true. <laughs> well, Spiller came out late in that opening drive and you could see he was limping around he's he's suffering from a turf toe that occurred in the season opening game here in Death Valley against Middle Tennessee State a game Danny you saw and I and when you have a, a type of injury with your toe and you're a speed guy and you rely on a lot of cutting that you have to do out there I think it's going to be an issue for him all year because he's not going to have any time to sit out I mean probably what you need to do is sit out for a month and just take you know keep all your weight off your toe he's not going to be able to do that because they rely on him so much so he's going to have to learn how to play with the pain you know they can use him in spots and try to work him in there uh, when they can we've got an official timeout on the field we'll come back to Death Valley in just a moment And as we come back to the live action on first down after that kickoff, Kyle Parker was looking to set up a screen to the wide side. The pass falls incomplete. It's second down and 10. Parker out of the shoot after struggling against Boston College last week. Six of 10 for 48 yards early. How about those long drives? Last week, in winning over Texas State, this TCU defense gave up a drive that ended with a Texas State touchdown that went for nearly eight minutes. But that's been the exception to the rule most of the, the season. This TCU defense has done a great job getting offenses off the field. Right now, TCU is averaging nearly 16 more offensive snaps per game, and that's a big difference. Spiller with a gain of two. It'll be third down and eight. Four wide, trips to the top. Spiller is a wing to the right. And here comes Ford in motion. Option. Spiller takes the pitch. And he is tripped up at the 45-yard line. And TCU, following their long touchdown drive, has forced the Clemson offense into a three and out. And I like this play call if it's first or second down. Third and when you need about eight, I'm not sure I'm not sure I like that call. But you're going right at Jerry Hughes right there. And all Kyle Parker did was just read him. If, if Hughes comes after Kyle, he pitches it to Spiller. And that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately, Spiller couldn't pick up the first. Dawson Zimmerman in the punt the football for Clemson. Jeremy Curley is back at the Horn Frogs, 16 to receive the kick. They're going to get hit with a false start. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 24. Five yard penalty, the fourth down. Well, if that penalty had gone against the Frogs, it would have been just enough to pick up the first down. Instead, it moves Clemson back to their own 40. And there you see 88 games without a punt return touchdown, seventh longest drought. And just in case you were wondering, it's Navy has the longest streak in the country without a punt return touchdown. And a fair catch is made at the 12-yard line. So Curley on the fair catch. No return. And those are the types of penalties that will drive a coach nuts. You saw the little false start penalty on the punt team. And now they've got them pretty backed up. You know, they're on their 12 coming out. But if they didn't have that penalty, they'd be on the 7. You know, So it's yeah. one of those situations where I know it's a small penalty, but you could really have them backed up right now if you didn't have that. That was a 48-yard punt for Clemson and Clemson has had a problem with punting net in the ACC. They were 11th out of 12 teams coming into play today. Just under 90 seconds to go in our opening period. Handoff right up the middle. And that's Joseph Turner, the senior from Austin. Well, Gary Patterson loved what he saw from Turner. But if he had his druthers between Turner, Wesley, and Matthew Tucker, he'd like to get each of those guys about 10 to between 10 and 15 carries a game. And I like his philosophy. It's, hey, let's keep our backs fresh. You know, let's get Turner about 10 to 12 carries. Let's work in the other guys. They're young. They're explosive. They can get yards for you, too. And everybody stays fresh throughout the game. Five wide, empty set. Jimmy Young to the top of your screen. Right down the seam. And that pass is caught for first down by Curley up at the 26-yard line. That's a gain of 11. 
And Curley is really a deep threat, whether he's catching passes or is turning kicks. He does it all. Last week at 176 all-purpose yards. They even like to run the Wildcat with him, put him back to the quarterback spot, and let him run the ball, work that, that option. But he's very athletic, probably one of their biggest playmakers for this TCU team. First and ten for the Frogs at their own 26. And they're going to try the right side, and there's just not much room over there. That's the first carry for Matthew Tucker, the freshman from Tyler. And we have come to the end of a first quarter. This is kind of what we expected. Tight, hard hitting, a lot on the line for both these teams. We'll take a break here in Death Valley in Clemson, South Carolina. Clemson scored first, but at the end of 15 minutes, TCU's got the lead, 7-3. Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers begin the second quarter here at home trailing TCU 7-3 and when you take a look at Dabo there he is now and here he is earlier on the sidelines with Gene Stallings the former NFL head coach and the former coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide there are so many links Danny between Clemson's head coaches in the University of Alabama Dabo Sweeney was a receiver there in the early 80s it's scary it is unbelievable my favorite line though is Dabo said he didn't walk on said he crawled on Alabama <laughs> <laughs> and that pass is caught up at the 40 yard line and a nice job of holding on to that football by Jimmy Young the junior from Monroe Louisiana and Dalton has started out very very quickly he's now five of six throwing the football And you can see Dalton the way he works his timing routes. I mean, here's just a simple flat, uh, flat slant combination, and he just hits the slant coming right in behind the slot. Jimmy Young is really his go-to guy for the big plays as well as the shorter throws. On first down, trying to keep that ball on the ground, and Wesley, who had the big catch and the touchdown drive, is able to break away briefly, but he is driven out of bounds by a host of orange-clad Tiger defenders. Well, that football draws a crowd, doesn't it? Cavell Connor, the senior from Richmond, Virginia, Manchester High School, leading a, a trio of defenders who puts the freshman out of bounds. Well, and hearing the Clemson defense talk all week, you know, they're aware of the TCU defense, and they want to kind of get to that level of respect that TCU's defense has. So I think they're taking a lot of pride the way they're playing against this team as well. Brandon May all fired up. From his middle linebacking spot for Clemson. Empty set again. Five wide. Trips to the top. And Andy Dalton doesn't like it. And TCU's going to burn out. a timeout. TCU. That's their first charge timeout of the half. Officials timeout. We'll take this timeout with them. We'll step away from, half, from Death Valley. 7-3. TCU the lead and the football. Well, Gary Patterson, the head coach of TCU, coming off that timeout, has to be relatively happy with the way this game is going. You're, you're never really going to take a crowd out of the game in Death Valley. But, but they've got the lead. They've driven the ball for a long touchdown drive, and their defense has played well early on. Their defense has played pretty well, but I know the expectations he has on his defense, and I'm not sure, I don't think he's so thrilled with the first drive for the field goal. I think he'd take that one back. With everything else, the way things unfold, I'm sure he's pretty happy. Clemson's defense, for the moment anyway, is missing Chris Chandler, Chancellor on the corner. Byron Maxwell is in there. Another flanker screen, and there is room to run. Into Clemson territory. One great move all the way down to the 33-yard line. And again, it's Curley. And when he gets in the open field, he can do that. <laughs> That's your favorite type of play as a quarterback. All you do is get it out to your wide receiver. It's one of the easiest throws you make. They run the little slip screen there. And when you've got a guy like Curley, you know he's a playmaker when he's a guy you put in the Wildcat back there. You get a couple of his receivers who block well for him downfield, and he's going to turn those smaller passes into bigger plays. That's a 29-yard game. Quarterback keeper to the Clemson 29-yard line. And that's Brandon May, the sophomore from Mobile, coming up and making the stop for the Clemson Tigers. And I've been very impressed with Dalton's ball handling skills. I mean, he does a great job of really sticking it in that in that running back's belly and waiting till the last second to read it to see if he takes it out and keeps it or if he gives it to the running back. And it's hard to follow when you're out there as a defender. Huge series for the Clemson defense. Tigers already down 7-3, and TCU finding the ability to move the football on the 
quarterback keeper again close to the first down at the 24 yard line just about a half a yard shy and Dalton goes slashing off the left side and like we just said you see Dalton there stick it right in Wesley's belly decides to keep it you saw Bowers go for the running back so Dalton says all right I'll keep it and take it up the middle for four yards Marshall Newhouse in the left tackle Kyle Dooley doing the job over there it's third and a short two Two wingbacks from the gun. Now motion. The handoff inside, and it looks to be just short by Joseph Turner. So it'll be decision time for Gary Patterson. And it is fourth down. They're not going to measure this. And it looks to be, Danny, about a full yard. And I think they're going to decide to go for it. I think Coach Patterson has been very aggressive so far. He kicked it to Spiller on the opening kickoff. Here he's making another statement saying, hey, we're a physical team. We're going to try to put this on our offensive line. Power eye. Deep handoff. No way. No way. That Clemson D-line just collapsed TCU's offensive front. And Turner never had a chance. And that's the risk you take going for it in this type of situation. The Clemson crowd, you can kind of tell they were getting a little bit concerned the way things were working out. And Clemson, you see a swarm of orange there to the football. Those big guys in the middle, Brandon Thompson and Jarvis Jenkins, do a great job penetrating the offensive line of TCU. Well, you could see Connor coming off the corner. That was a tremendous defensive play. And the linebacking crew was once something that Dabo Sweeney said they were concerned about coming into the season, but they've really played well for these guys. Uh, Kevin Steele, the new defensive coordinator for Clemson, has really done a good job on that side of the football. Here's Parker. Steps up. Now finally throws. And this may be a late hit on the quarterback as the ball sails out of bounds. And I think that's going to be on Jerry Hughes. First McLeod. Ruffin the passer. Defense number 41. 15 yard penalty. First down. So that'll go against Washington. And Darrell Washington doing all he can to get to Kyle Parker. And you do see him take a little bit of a cheap shot there late. Gets the deserved penalty. I know they like to look after those quarterbacks, but that one was one that, that they had the call right. And I saw Jerry Hughes there upset with the call, trying to defend his linebacker, but I don't think he could make much case there. Look at the penalty yards so far here in the first half for the Frogs. Line of scrimmage is now the 40-yard line. And here's the handoff to Spiller. And Spiller tries to cut back, and he cut backs right into the flow of the defense. And that's where Kelly Griffin, the nose tackle, was waiting for him for TCU. There you see those guys inside, Griffin and Grant. And Gary Patterson talked earlier this week. Everybody knows about Hughes, but he's really looking for a much more consistent effort today from Wayne Daniels at the other defensive end spot. Yep, nine, number 96. I mean, a lot of offenses are going to have to work their, their past uh, blocking schemes towards Hughes. So that's going to create a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups for uh, Wayne Daniels. Second and nine. Oh, and that pass was nearly intercepted, and then it's pulled in. Michael Palmer. And Palmer has it, and he's got a first down at the Horn Frog 49. And this is about as tight as throw as you will make on the collegiate level. First of all, you're throwing it with Darrell Washington in pursuit. He's all over the pass. I mean, he is covered. Michael Palmer is covered right there. And Kyle Parker just beats it with a perfect throw. <laughs> I was looking for the window on that replay. There was no window. <laughs> it was sure closed. Wasn't. First and ten. One back set. And there's just nowhere to go for Spiller. And he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. And you can see how those linebackers, Carter and Washington, run to the football. They just get a lot of help. I mean, they're a swarming defense. You see a lot of TCU guys getting involved there on that running game. But it really starts with the middle guys in there, Griffin and Grant. No gain. Second and ten. 
And you see Kyle Parker today getting a lot of help from his coaches on the sideline. Once he goes up to the ball, he's getting the best play possible they can run against TCU. Billy Napier is the offensive coordinator for Clemson, youngest in the ACC, just 30 years old. Parker down the seam, in and out of the hands of Spiller. No flags. But the crowd sure wants one. And they're once again going to their playmaker, Spiller. And this is probably one of the toughest adjustments you have to make as a receiver is when you have to switch the way your head is looking at the ball. Spiller has to come completely over one shoulder. See him right here. He'll turn his back all the way around. His head follows the ball. And it's just a really tough to make. You almost have to do a Willie Mays style with the basket catch. The defense there was tight. I don't think there should have been a call. There. You know, I thought Washington had good coverage there. You could hear the crowd reacting on the jumbotron. Well, we are at Clemson. That's right. Third <laughs> down and ten. Parker with a good opportunity to run the football now. And he is going to be brought down two yards shy of the marker. So it'll be fourth down and two at the TCU 41. And Kyle Parker here is continuing to make good decisions. It's third and ten. He's looking downfield. Nothing's open. All of a sudden, he sees the middle of the, the defense open up. Gives it all he can. Gets as much yards as he can. Gets down. And now you start playing the field position. At least he didn't make a turnover. He was smart there with the football. Got some positive yards. And they move, they, they move on to, to live another down. Well, the punt unit is on the field for an apparent punt for Clemson. And Zimmerman gets it away. And a fair catch is called for at the 13-yard line. Jeremy Curley with the fair catch for TCU. The Horn Frogs have the football and the lead at Clemson. We're back to Death Valley in just a moment on ESPN 360. <laughs> Gary Patterson on the sidelines. You know, yesterday when we watched him at the... The walkthrough on the practice field here at Clemson. He was in a tie. He showed it was a business trick. Absolutely. And here's a scheduling court. Check this out. Only FIU started the season later this year than TCU. And they're going to alternate home and away games. And that's only the third time in the modern history of TCU football that's happened. Dalton with the, the football. And he's off to a great start. And he spins it up near the 16-yard line. Dalton to start this game on the road in Death Valley. Six of seven, 117 yards, a touchdown, and he's rushed the football five times for 23 more yards. Well, we knew coming into this game he was very efficient passer, passer with his 73% completion percentage. We've seen him pick up there. We've, we've talked about how he can run the ball. He's doing that effectively. He's just doing a great job managing the game. That's what you want to do when you've got two good defenses. You want your quarterback to play smart. The junior from Katy, Texas, re ready for the snap again this time they keep it on the ground as they go off the left side Joseph Turner and that's really the first time here in the first half Danny he's found any room he has and, I, and Turner's a guy they want to get involved anytime he's rushed for more than 56 yards they're 12 and 0 when he does that so I'd be handing him the ball too but right there is really the first time they've been able to penetrate to the Clemson defense to get to that linebacker level Turner's been through a lot in his career he's had reconstructive surgery on both knees he's led TCU in rushing the last three years TCU two of three on third down conversions five wide trips to the bottom empty set for Dalton steps up and there's the flag and interference is going to be called on Sadat Chambers He came in the fifth defensive back, and this is going to give TCU a fresh shut of downs. Pass interference. Defense number 27. That is a spot foul. Automatic first foul. And watching this play, seeing Sadat Chambers react to it, it's almost like he knew this was going to be their throw. He had a good beat on it, and just, you know, from the official standpoint, it depends on where the official is on the field where he sees it. You could see where he can interpret that as a pass interference. Personally, I thought that was a pretty good defensive play. Well, that says something, you being a quarterback <laughs> at all. So it's first and ten for the Frogs at their own 25. 
Dalton cranks it. And his arm may have been hit as he released that football. It falls incomplete. And it stops the clock in a very quickly played first half. Seven and a half minutes to go to halftime. And this was really the first play where TCU hasn't had something good happen with the ball. And it was purely, it was just a miscommunication between Dalton and his wide receivers because there was nobody in the vicinity of where he was throwing the ball. It looked to me like he might have had a double move call and the receiver didn't get that in the play call. Good rush by McCullough Goodman, but there was no contact with his throwing arm. Second and ten. Dalton picture perfect protection and the throw is high boy he had Bart Johnson open and that was tremendous protection and Dalton just threw the ball behind him and high and T TCU ran a route there where they had a couple guys running across the field at different levels you can see Curley right in front of Johnson right there and uh, Dalton just slightly overthrew him just a hair Rashard Hall had the coverage for Clemson and now on third and long, here comes the crowd again here in Death Valley. Wide receiver bunch formation at the top of the screen. First time we've seen that today. Empty set, five wide. Blitz coming, pass tipped, incomplete. Intended for Curley. Marcus Gilchrist had the coverage. The this, Frogs will punt. It's another third down situation where Kevin Steele has dialed up the blitz. He bought an extra linebacker there. And that creates one-to-one man-on-man matchups across the board. And Clemson's defense, their secondary is pretty strong. They're, they're a tough group. So that's going to be a challenge for TCU. But when those one-on-one -on -one opportunities are there, you've got to make them. Anson Kelton is on to punt for the first time today for TCU. He's a sophomore from Fort Worth. And he sends it down the field with his right foot. And any punt that goes unreturned by Clemson, consider yourself lucky. A tremendous special teams unit on kickoffs and punts for Clemson. 7-3 TCU. Fifteenth ranked TCU, by the way, that is their highest ranking in 50 years in the month of September, leading at Clemson halfway through the second period. And you can see since 2005, TCU uh, running with some pretty tall company in terms of total wins. And we know that back in Fort Worth, there is a host of people at the basketball arena watching the game. And in fact, some of the players who didn't make the trip are watching this game. By the way, it's free, so if you're in the arena and you want to text one of your friends to get over, you can do it. It's free admission today. First and ten. From the eye. Deep pitch to Spiller. So dangerous on the corner. And he is tripped up as he gets into Horn Frog territory at the 49-yard line. And outside of that one carry at the end of the opening drive where Spiller came off the field he really hasn't shown too much pain because of that turf toe injury no I mean he looks fine out there I think it's just one of those situations where it hurts but you can play so I mean it really is a test of a, a guy's toughness a player's toughness when he's out there CJ Spiller now 10 carries for 37 yards second down and three again from the eye this is Ford you got to mark him at all times in motion Play action for Parker. In traffic. Incomplete. That would have been a first down at the 45-yard line. But Jerron Brown, the freshman wideout, couldn't hold it. And that was a pretty good job, Kyle Parker, finding his late receiver coming across the field, much like Andy Dalton did earlier in the game. Clemson, three of six on third down. Parker now... 7 of 13 for 57 yards here in the first half, throwing the football for Clemson. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Steps up under center. And a deep handoff to Spiller. Spiller trying to get outside. And he is bumped out of bounds at the 45-yard line, and he has got the first down. You know, he's a pretty good option 
on any kind of situation on third down. I mean, we talked about it. There's a great guy to give the ball to. Anytime you give it to him, something good happens. When you've got a pass rusher like Jerry Hughes who gets up the field, he gets after the quarterback, you can run those draws underneath. And when you got a guy like Spiller to give it to, he'll go get you those first downs. Five-yard gain. Spiller, an All-American. Academic honor roll in the ACC in the classroom as well. From the 45-yard line, Spiller again, this time off the right side. Boy, and here in the first half, Darrell Washington for TCU has been all over the field. And again, he makes the tackle. He lost the helmet. And, I mean, Darrell Washington's a guy. He's got 4-4 four, four speed. He can run sideline to sideline. We asked Albo Sweeney, well, how do you, are you worried about uh, Jerry Hughes? And he said, well, Darrell Washington's about as good as it gets, too, at the linebacker position. TCU has done such a tremendous job putting players in the pros over the last decade more than any other team in the Mountain West. Second down and six. And Spiller is now wide. He's at the top of your screen. As they go with four wide and two tight end. And the pass is caught. Short game, but to the 38-yard line of TCU. And Taylor, the fullback, with another catch. That's his second reception of the first half. And Kyle Parker there. Uh, TCU defense showed blitz in their pre-snap look. And I think Kyle Parker, you know, expected some pressure. He kind of saw him drift, but he still made a good decision in getting it out there to his fullback. Taylor, two catches, 17 yards, third down and three. Bunch formation for Clemson. First time they showed that today. Here's the pitch. And the first down is collected Jamie Harper the sophomore from Jacksonville Trinity Christian Academy still looking for his first touchdown of the year but that's his 33rd carry he's been busy and here's another toss sweep we see on third down a lot of times people expect the, the uh, pass on third down and three but they went with the power game and they're just short and a fourth down conversion attempt this is very very close And I don't know, that spot, they're going to have to take another look at this. TCU thinks they've got the football. Well, we saw Harper had the run on third down and three, and I know the Clemson fans were unhappy with the spot they got here. I thought he got a short spot. And now we'll see what kind of spot they get on the quarterback sneak. They tried to the quick snap it and catch TCU off guard because the coaches were aware that they didn't get the first down. But TCU looked pretty prepared for that quarterback sneak. This is going to be real, real close. And they don't have it. So a huge stand by the TCU defense. They're going to take the ball over at the 35-yard line. So both defenses have come up with fourth down stops here in the first half. And that's a huge stop as we're getting late in the first half. Where Clemson appeared to be driving for either a field goal that would have put them within a point or taken the lead. Yeah, I mean, Clemson has started running the ball pretty well. They had some positive plays, and then they try to get the quarterback sneak on fourth down. Now we'll see what TCU can do on the offensive side of the ball. Can they take advantage of this momentum shift? So TCU's offense is back on the field. And here's the pitch. And it goes to the freshman. Up to the 49-yard line, and how about Ed Wesley? He's had a huge role in the first half here for the Horned Frogs. And you can see Dalton, the way he runs this option uh, running plays to, to perfection almost. I mean, he goes out there, he's got Daquan Bowers, he's reading the defensive end, does a great job of just reading him, letting the end suck up to him, gives it out to Wesley, and he runs up and gets a huge game. But Dalton, a lot of it has to do with his ball handling skills. The way he does, he puts in the back and in there, just straight out of the shotgun. Here's the keeper by the quarterback. Dalton scampers out of bounds at the 46. So as he goes out of bounds, the clock stops, 347 to go. Horn Frogs have two timeouts. Clemson with a full reserve of three here before halftime. Boy, and Dalton has not looked intimidated at all. And, Dave, I was talking about the ball handling skills. Watch the, uh, Bowers there. Number 93 went right after the ball fake, and that little bit of hesitation creates just enough room for Andy Dalton to get the edge on, the, on a fast Clemson defense. There's Bowers. You know, Ricky Sapp 
wrecked havoc with Boston College last week from his defensive end spot. We have not called his name much. Here's Dalton with the pitch. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Nowhere to go for Christian. Ryan Christian is just slammed to the turf. And Chambers leads a group of the defenders, dropping well, him out of bounds. I think the Clemson defense finally figured out what's going on. That time they did what they're supposed to do when you're defending the option. They stretched it out, you know, forced Dalton to make a, a later decision than he wanted to. The longer he hangs on the football and you get him running sideways instead of down the field, the more chance the rest of your defense has to catch up. That tackle by Chambers was ruled inbound, so the clock continues to run. Third and five, empty set. Trips to the top. Flanker screen inside. Curley is able to spin away from one tackler, and he's still going to be a little over a yard shy of the first down. So it's fourth down, and the punt team is coming on. And that's what I always watch when I watch a defense is how do they adjust during a game? You saw Curley run that exact same play the other direction, another side of the field. And that time, Kevin Steele and the Clemson defense did a good job recognizing it, swarming to the football, and preventing him from getting the first down. Second punt of the day. Well, the punt team is on the field for TCU. It's fourth, just over a yard. And Kelton will send this one down the field. And that goes off the side of his foot and will not go out inside the 20. In fact, it'll go out at the 28 yard line. So that's a 19 yard punt. Well, and this game is unfolding exactly how we thought it would. There's not a lot of points on the board. It's more of a field position game. But when you've got a field position game, your punter becomes that much more important. And when you have an opportunity to pin Clemson back, you've got to take advantage of it. So, I mean, that right there is not what TCU wanted to see right there because with Clemson coming out with the ball in the 28, they should really be pinned back inside at least their 15. You know, here in the first half, one of the big matchups was Landon Turner, the right tackle, 72, how he was going to do against Jerry Hughes. He's done a pretty good job, but Clemson's only got three points on the board. Here's Ford. Flanker screen takes it across the 35 and he has got the he is near a first down give him a gain of nine And now we'll see Clemson started picking up the urgency level They've got a minute 40 on the clock and ticking so they've got to start working that hurry up two-minute offense here Second catch of the game for Ford He's really been a non-factor to this point Spiller comes out of the backfield and that is going to be ruled inbound, so the clock is going to continue to roll to the dismay of the fans. And I think it's catching Clemson a little bit off guard there, too. So there, that is a first down, so the clock was stopped long enough until the chains were starting up. But I thought Spiller did a good job getting out of bounds. I thought he got out of bounds, clearly. 10 of 16 for Parker. And now we've got flags. Half a fraction. Before the play, snap and fraction. Offense number 62, five yard penalty. Go first down. A lot of times you'll see this happen in a two minute, you know, hurry up offense because your snap count is a different rhythm than it normally is, you know, throughout the game. It kind of goes at a different pace, and a lot of times the offensive linemen will try to anticipate it, and that'll cause them to jump. Three, play, three penalties, 24 yards now for Clemson. First and 15. All the time in the world for Parker, who sends it right down the middle of the field. He's got a man wide open. It's Spiller. And that's a touchdown saving tackle by Darrell Washington. Spiller went right down the seam. Parker had all the time in the world, and he delivered the pass beautifully for a huge gainer. And this is a great play call by Billy Napier. TCU's playing a two-deep offense, and when you've got that, it creates a matchup with your linebacker against C.J. Spiller. When you've got that type of speed, that's the matchup you want. 60-yard gainer, so now Spiller has got a 60-yard gainer in each of the first four games. And he takes the football down to the two-yard line. Wayne Daniels makes the tackle. And Clemson wants a timeout with 42 seconds remaining here in the first half. Tigers knocking on the door, trying to take the lead. 
And that was a great play call, the big play to C.J. Spiller. See Kyle Parker, he's just waiting and letting that middle of the field open up. The two deep safeties, they've got to control the outside of the field. But in that same, when they do that, it opens up the middle of the field, and they put a lot of faith in Darrell Washington, number 41, because he's got to take C.J. Spiller wherever he goes. And Spiller just runs right by him, straight up the middle of the field. It's something you can only run with a type of back like C.J. Spiller, because you've got to pass protect for a long time for Kyle Parker, because that play takes a while to develop. But with C.J. Spiller, he gets there so fast, you can get it to him. Well, Spiller with that long catch, He's now joined Reggie Bush of Southern Cal as the second player to accumulate at least 2,500 rushing yards, 1,000 receiving yards, 1,500 kickoff return yards, and 500 punt return yards. The guy does it all. <laughs> and with a hurt toe. <laughs> and when you start getting a mention with the likes of Reggie Bush, uh, it says something about your career. Second and goal. Parker is under center. Here's the pitch to who, guess who, Spiller. And he is brought down, no, touchdown! He stretched out the football and caught the pylon. He looked to be stopped at the one yard line. He stretched the football out and caught the pylon. Touchdown, Clemson. And you can see C.J. Spiller is a little gassed. I think he's got some grass in his eye from that late stretch. Here, all it is is a race. Right now, it's a race to that pile on. He actually cuts it up there. Oh, he and I believe they will take a look at this because that was a pretty long stretch. Oh, and I was, do yeah. not think he got in. That was a great second effort by Spiller. And I think the official simply saw the pile on get hit. But you can see his knee goes down right there, and the ball's probably at the one or just inside the one, but I don't think it crossed the plane. His knee is down at the two-yard line. Here's another angle. Right that's there. A, that's a great look at the replay right there. I mean, it was really not that close to the end zone. I mean, I could see where the official just was thinking if he hits the pile on, it's a touchdown, and that's probably what he did think. Just want to be clear on this. This is an official's review. This is not a TCU challenge. So we're going to take a look at this. Now, obviously, the play was ruled as a touchdown on the field, so they have to have indisputable video evidence to overturn this call. But I think what we've seen right here with our replay guys, and it's been a great, we've been able to see some great looks at it, but I think it's pretty clear that he was short. Spiller trying to reach for the pylon. He had the football in his left hand, but it looked as if his knee was clearly down at the two-yard line. It's a big call in this game. And it's a great effort by C.J. Spiller. I mean, the guy's been made. He just came off the field, made a big play. And you got to, that takes a lot of energy out oh. of him. You've got to be gassed when you make a 60-yard reception like he did. And if this play does come back to the two-yard line, that will be a touchdown-saving tackle by the free safety T.J. Johnson. And then it creates another issue for Clemson, who has struggled in the red zone. So you know they were relieved when they saw the touchdown signal, and they're thinking right now, I would imagine they're talking to their coaches in the booth, and they're already calling, they're getting a play in mind, because if they're seeing what we're seeing, then they know they have to go out and get ready. And right now I'm looking at the coaches. They've got the offense huddled up. They're going to have something ready to go. Still waiting on the official call. This would have been Clemson's first rushing touchdown of the year. After further review, the player was down at the half yard line. Third down. He was down inbounds. He was down inbounds. And they got the call right. I mean, it was pretty clear. Clemson. You saw when his knee touched at the, the second charge where the ball the was, was right at about just inside the one yard line. So they did a great job of getting the spot right. And now it puts Clemson offense. And you can see they were ready for it. They've had their offense huddled up. They've been talking about it. They know what they're going to run. And this really is a huge play for Clemson's offense. And right now, I guarantee you, they're debating, too, 
Well, what happens if we don't get it? Because it's going to be fourth down then. Do we, want, we don't want another field goal. We need a touchdown. But they have a timeout to deal with that. Right. They if, can talk about it. If they it. don't get in. But you can see Dabo is fired up right now. He is telling his offensive line, his seniors, he's going to tell the guys on the team, this is on you. Our offense has struggled. We need you guys to come up with a play. And that's what I love about Dabo. I mean, you see him in there. He's playing with a, he's, he's coaching with a lot of passion. He's getting the guys fired up. And, and that's the kind of the guy that you'd like to play for. You'll respond to that. It'll be interesting to see how his offensive line responds to this right here. Well, here comes the and offensive And it looks like unit. they're going to go with maybe a quick count straight to the line of scrimmage, try to catch TCU a little bit off balance. And Spiller is coming on. Now, if TCU could call timeout here, they have two left. Tight power formation. Parker. Spiller. Touchdown, Clemson. First rushing touchdown of the year. One-yard touchdown run, C.J. Spiller. Tigers in front for the second time today, point after pending. Well, I would have been shocked if that was anything else except a power run, especially behind his left side of his line. And you give it to your senior tailback in C.J. Spiller. And when you've got a guy, Thomas Austin, who's already being talked about as one of the top offensive line prospects for the NFL, you run behind him. Wade is the holder. Jackson on to attempt the extra point. It's up and good. So C.J. Spiller was on the receiving end of the biggest offensive play of the first half for Clemson. A 60-yard pass reception from Kyle Parker. And after having one touchdown taken off the board, a flag is down, by the way, on that extra point. They come back after the review. Spiller bangs it in for the score, and Clemson's got the lead 10-7. Where the flag is, you wonder if it's something with the kicker because it kind of looks about in the backfield where the kicker would finish his kick, but I didn't see him get touched. After the play, on Sports of Life, on the offense, number 89, will be 15 yards. It will be assessed on the kickoff. Miguel Chavis, Another look at the TD, C.J. Spiller. First rushing touchdown of the year for Clemson. That's hard to believe. And you saw Dabo Sweeney getting after his offensive line, and they did a great job of creating some push up front. At the point of attack, they moved TCU's defensive line, and that's exactly what they needed to do for Spiller to get in for the easy touchdown. And you can tell Spiller there, he's had an incredible first half. He's put a lot of this team on his shoulders, as he does every week. And he keeps producing with a hurt toe. I mean, it says a lot about his character and toughness as a football player. So there are still 33 seconds to go until halftime. By the way, stick with us at halftime. We'll have our play of the first half brought to us by DiGiorno. We'll have a conversation with Dr. Danny Morrison, the outgoing athletic director at TCU. And we'll check all the stats and highlights from our first explosive 30 minutes in this critical non-conference game where TCU is trying to get out of Death Valley and keep their hopes for a BCS at large birth alive and Clemson trying to move to three and one and get back in the top 25. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that penalty plays out because that's going to be a big field position turnaround for TCU. High, relatively short kick from the 23 yard line. And a good special teams tackle. Connor made the, made the stop. TCU is still with two timeouts. Oh, they've got plenty of time, and they don't need that much yardage to get in the field goal range. And we've got a guy like Dalton, a quarterback you can trust, makes good decisions. You've got the timeouts, so you can work the middle of the field, and you can get down there. I mean, that's why that penalty could come into play here. And I'm sure the Clemson coaches are not thrilled with that. Evans is three for three on his field goal attempts this year for TCU. All came on the road to Virginia in week one. He did not attempt a field goal last week at Texas State. Dalton. And Dalton's last three pass attempts have been wide. That one was intended for Bart Johnson. So halftime will be a good time for Dalton to get a little bit settled down. And I think what you've seen is Kevin Steele and the Clemson defense have made a few adjustments. Uh, they've just started to recognize some of the different formations that TCU 
uh, has been working, and they're starting to recognize things a little bit better. Their reaction has been better, and they've been a better job of getting in Dalton's face a little bit. Dalton, 7 of 12 for 121 yards and a touchdown here in the first half. That pass is complete. Trying to cut it back. And Johnson unable to do so. Clock continues to run. TCU two timeouts. They can stop it if they wish, and now they finally do. So the Horn Frogs will take a timeout. 13 seconds remaining. They've got one timeout remaining. And you can see Dalton here just working the inside of the field because he can. He works Bart Johnson, number six. But watch number 34, Ed Wesley, came into your picture there late with a great downfield block for him. That's the one thing I've been pretty impressed with is the receiving core. And not only that, but the running backs, too. They block well downfield because they know they work that shorter passing game. And that the better they block downfield, the more big plays they're able to create. Well, we expected a tight game, a game dominated by the defenses. Both teams have had tremendous special teams play, and that's what we've gotten in the first half. Yeah, and, and you take away two plays. One from Clemson had the big play to Spiller. TCU had the tipped pass to, to Wesley. Wesley that was a big, a big gain. You take those away, and it has been a pretty defensive battle. Third down and four. With 13 seconds here, they don't have a whole lot of time, and they've got to get about 20 yards, so they might get one shot out of here to get it down in the field goal range. Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, came over from Alabama. He says, don't call this defense the Steel Curtain. Steel with an E. Time for another timeout by TCU. They get it at the 49-yard line, nine ticks left. That pass was, in, was complete to Jeremy Curley. So in nine seconds, you've got two plays. Right. You can get two plays. You can still work the middle of the field and get a timeout quick. Or actually, excuse me, they don't have any timeouts left here. So they'll have to work the sideline at this point of the game. That or you take two shots at the end zone with Hail Marys, but those take a long time. So maybe you only get one. Well, Spiller rushing the football. He's been the story offensively for Clemson. 15 carries, 48 yards, a touchdown. He's got two pass receptions for 64 yards. 60 came on that last drive that set up his one-yard touchdown run. First TD rushing the football this year by the Tigers. The thing that just impresses me about Spiller is his versatility. I mean, he does it as a returner. He does it as a running back. He does it as a receiver. You can put him anywhere on the field and utilize his skills, and that creates havoc for defenses, and not only defense, but special teams. All right, so here we go. TCU's got a first down at their own 49. Trailing by three. Dalton to the sidelines. Johnson couldn't hold on. Boy, had the right play called, trying to get to the sidelines and out of bounds, but the ball went off the hands of Johnson. He had both hands on the football. He had it right there, and that's exactly what we talked about, about working that sideline was really their only option. And basically what Bart Johnson did was run a little flat and up route. Some teams like to call it a squirrel route, but maybe if he catches that, I don't know if his momentum would have carried him out of bounds. The officials might have called him inbounds anyway, so maybe it works better that they get a shot for a Hail Mary here. Barring a defensive penalty, this will be the final offensive snap of the first half. Dalton back to pass. Going to send this one down inside the 10. Nearly intercepted, falls incomplete. That's our first half. This one has been as good as advertised. A first half dominated by the defenses. And in a game in which we expected a lot of bad weather essentially we've gone through the first half with no rain yeah, and really the field hasn't. is in tremendous field uh, the field looks great yeah it hasn't affected the quarterbacks they've been able to throw the ball well and we've got a pretty good game on our hands right here i mean the defenses have been very impressive both quarterbacks have made good decisions and it should make for a very interesting second half all right don't go anywhere this one's going to be a good one thanks you're watching this game on espn 360 our halftime activities coming up after the break clemson leads tcu at the half 10-7 What about adjustments offensively for TCU as they get ready to take their own first offensive possession of the second half? Well, I think they've just got to keep doing the things they've been doing. They've got to keep giving Dalton the ball in his hands, let him work those play actions, work that run option. 
Akili does a nice job on the kickoff return following his blocks up to the 26 yard line. That's a 25 yard kickoff return and that's where TCU is going to start first and 10. I really feel like this game the direction it's going is which team makes the least mistakes and you never want to tell your quarterback to go out there and not not screw up the game but the bottom line is it might be the team that plays smarter football as the team that's going to end up on top. Andy Dalton in the first half effective. Many of those incompletions, though, came late in the first half. And how many times have you seen it in college football? The first drive of the second half really sets the tone for the game. Dive to Joseph Turner, and he takes it up near the 31-yard line. And I'd expect Coach Patterson to get on the offensive line a little bit, say, hey, let's work that running game. Let's get the power game working a little bit more. I mean, they're used to establishing that line of scrimmage, and they're going to try to do it here coming out of the gate. Turner, six carries for 17 yards. He rushed for 129 yards last week. And this TCU offensive line, there's a lot of beef in there. They averaged 315 across the front. Option. Wesley. And he is driven out of bounds as he reaches the 35-yard line. It looks to be third and a yard for TCU. And when you talk about adjustments, I think Clemson will continue to try to string the option attack out. Don't let him go uh, north and south. Make him go to the sideline. String him out and let the rest of the defense catch up to the play. Rashard Hall made the stop. And there's you're looking into the face mask of Ricky Sapp. Three of six third down conversions today for TCU. Trips to the top. Keeping it on the ground. Nowhere to go. Daquan Bowers closed it down, and he's going to force the Horn Frogs to punt. And Clemson did exactly what they did. You see big number 99, Jarvis Jenkins, on a little twist. The inside twist move comes right around, gets the penetration in the backfield for the big stop. That's what Clemson wanted to do. They wanted to come out here and shut TCU down right up the first series. Jarvis Jenkins, his fourth tackle of the day. And look at this. Maybe the, uh, the weather has actually subsided a little bit. It's clearing up. High. Good punt. Taken at the 18-yard line. No fair catch, and Jacoby Ford pays for it. Flag is down. Ford had a 61-yard punt return touchdown in the season opener against Middle Tennessee. And, man, it helps when you can get a, a punt with that type of hang time. Let your coverage team get down there. That was an outstanding punt. 49-yard punt. Personal foul. Just the offense. Helmet to helmet contact. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. And I was a little bit worried about that happening when I saw the play occur. See Jacoby Ford there, spins off the second one. And then you saw right there, number 43, Tank Gardner, come in. Straight helmet to helmet contact there and it's it's one of those calls where you've got a guy He's aggressively running down the field How do you tell him to pick up and and slow down and turn his shoulder so he doesn't hit with his helmet? So it's an understandable penalty 52 yards in penalties now for TCU. Here's Parker on the play action lofts it up incomplete Trying to get that football out to Dwayne Allen the freshman tight end And that was good coverage by TCU. It's incomplete second and ten and I like that play call coming out with an aggressive play action, first play of the half. Unfortunately, there, Dwayne Allen had a little bit trouble getting out of his route. He ran into the safety there, and that throws off the timing, and it just wasn't there. Parker, now 11 of 18, 133 yards after that incompletion. Second down and 10. Second and ten. Shot nearly intercepted. That pass was nearly picked off by T.J. Johnson. Pass was tipped, and Johnson just couldn't reach back with his left hand to bring it in. And that was really one of the first errant passes I've seen Kyle Parker make. It was basically just there was a receiver in the flat, and you saw his tight end running the little stick route there, number 86, Michael Parker. And 
Kyle Parker's got to be careful because he threw it behind him. You never want to miss an out route behind a receiver because that's when you get into big trouble. Johnson, the junior from Garland, Texas, nearly had the pick. Clemson five of nine on third down. Going to roll the pocket and send this one out of bounds. And so Parker set, he heads back to the bench, a three and out for Clemson. And so the teams in this defensive minded game exchanged three and outs to start the second half. And number 96, Wayne Daniels, did a good job of getting in Kyle Parker's face right away. And I know Coach Scott, the, the offensive line coach, would be a little frustrated because that was designed rollout. The first thing you've got to do is seal that end so your quarterback is protected because he really had no choice there but to throw it away. Zimmerman is on to punt. This will be his third punt of the afternoon. Good kick. No fair catch at the 21 yard line. Keeley up to the 25, a return of four. So Keeley with a curly with a short return. And that's where TCU will start after a 47 yard punt by Dawson Zimmerman. We'll take a break from Death Valley. The ponchos are out. We're into the second half. This game's hanging in the balance. Clemson with a three point lead at home. 12.46 to go, third quarter. Clemson leads TCU 10-7. The teams exchanged three and outs to begin the second half. And now the Horn Frogs have the football for their second possession here in the third quarter. It'll start from their own 25. Andy Dalton on the keeper. And it breaks clean right up the middle across the 40 and down at the 43-yard line. And he saw Dalton just do a great job of splitting the middle of the defense. The offensive line did a great job of creating a huge hole for Dalton right there. And now with, when you see the rain start coming down again, the running game becomes that much more important for both teams. And TCU looks to establish that line of scrimmage. Now you can see since the touchdown drive, TCU's had trouble moving the football. That was an 18-yard gainer for the junior quarterback from Katy, Texas. Dalton to throw pass is caught into Clemson territory and down near the 42 yard line goes Jimmy Young And you got to like as a quarterback when you get the ball to your receiver watch number 88 Jimmy Young Watch how he turns right up the field as soon as he got the ball He started moving towards the, the goal line. I mean he is getting positive yards and you got to like that I mean that's how you create those yards after the catch that make a quarterback stats just continue to escalate Back-to-back 18-yard -back gainers for TCU. They've moved the football into Clemson territory. Here's Wesley trying to get wide. Breaks one tackle, and that's a good carry down near the 32-yard line. It looks as if it's enough for a first down. So TCU has put together three impressive plays in a row in this drive. And that's what you would expect to happen. When you start running the quarterback successfully up the middle, it opens up the outside, and you see Wesley there taking advantage of that corner because all of a sudden the ends start collapsing on the quarterback, and it allows the running back to get the edge. And that will go for 10, and it is a first down. Wesley, just 5'9", but he packs a wallop at nearly 190 pounds. An empty set on first down. Dalton and he's caught from the backside and a flag is down and the sack is collected by Goodman and will check the penalty this could be a holding call against the frogs holder offer number 70 it's declined second down so the holding call on Newhouse is declined and you see Malicia Goodman on the right side of your screen, number 97. Just runs right, pa right past the tackle, Marshall Newhouse, number 70. And that's when you just get your speed around the corner right there. And that's really the first time they've been able to get to Dalton all day because he gets rid of the ball so quick, you can't get to him. But that time they were able to get some pressure on him and get some longer yarded situations. Just the third sack all season against TCU, a loss of eight. Here's Dalton on the keeper. And he is tripped up by Connor. Connor with a good open field tackle. And we talked to Dabo Sweeney earlier in the week, and he said what they wanted to do 
was put TCU's offense in uncomfortable situations, get them off schedule. And what he means by that is don't let them get positive yards on first downs. Here you get the sack, and you got second and 20. Now they've got a third and 15. These are the situations that TCU does not want to be in. Chambers with four tackles today. Third and 16. TCU needs the Clemson 23 to keep this drive alive. Dalton, good protection pass is thrown behind the receiver, but he pulls it in at the 25-yard line, and that's a nice catch there by Curley. Jeremy Curley with a catch. And that's fourth down. And the field goal team's coming on. And this was a great job. Dalton makes a great throw with a little bit of pressure, some guys around his feet, and Curley just throws amazing athleticism by going back against his momentum. The reason that was such a great play, it got them right back into field goal position right here. Evans, his career long is 50. It's a 42-yard attempt to be his longest of the year. It's on the way, twisting, no good. So Evans' first miss of the year is a missed opportunity to tie this game. 9.32 to go. The Clemson defense dodges a bullet. The Tigers will have the football, and they have the lead when we return to Death Valley. Ten seven. Clemson's got the ball. Spiller with a six-yard carry on first down. Now it's second down and four from the 31. Rolling and throwing passes caught. Parker is able to get that football to the tight end, Michael Palmer. And it's third down. And you can see the leg of C.J. Spiller. We've talked an awful lot about the turf toe, and Danny, we know he's hurting. But he's sticking it out there. He's been a huge factor in this game. He is. I mean, he hurt that toe in the first week of the season against Middle Tennessee. But he's a grinder. He just keeps going. He keeps getting after it. And you got to love his toughness right now. Five of ten for Clemson on third down. Spiller is a wing to the right. Trips to the top. Quick throw. Pass is caught. And it's Ford. Jacoby Ford makes the catch, and it's a first down up at the 37-yard line. Trey Johnson, the tackle for TCU. That's why, as a quarterback, you love to spread them out. You can see the defense much clearer. When you get those wide receivers out there, you can see the man-to-man -man matchups. And Jacoby Ford just had the one-on-one -on -one right there. And Kyle Parker did a good job of getting just enough yardage for the first down. Ford now with four catches on the game. We turn under eight minutes to go, third quarter. Here's Spiller. Boy, really nowhere to go in the hole. And that was Jerry Hughes who tripped him up and Daniels who finished the job for the Horn Frogs. And Daniels has done a better job, number 96. You know, a lot of the talk has been about Jerry Hughes and how offensive coordinators will game plan towards his way of the defense. Well, that in turn creates opportunity for Wayne Daniels. He's, he's been able to capitalize on that in the second half. Daniels with five tackles. Spiller now 17 carries, 57 yards, and a touchdown. Second and seven. Parker flushed. And he throws this ball, and it's nearly caught. Coming back at midfield to try to make a circus catch was the tight end, Palmer, and he couldn't hold on. And those are the types of opportunities you only get so many times in a the game. They try to run a little wheel route to Palmer. You see him open up. He starts off in the flat. Parker pumps him to the flat. and It's hoping to get him deep. Does a good job of just making a playoff schedule. And Palmer's got to come up with that catch for him, especially in these types of games where every chunk of yardage matters that much more. Danny, I'm not sure Parker may have been trying to throw that ball away. He might have been, but so was Joe, Joe Montana and the famous <laughs> catch. So <laughs> they can sometimes work for you. Third and seven. Six of 11 on third downs today. Too tall. 
incomplete. The pass was intended for Terrence Ash. And the former walk-on needed about six more inches to pull that one down. And Kyle Parker did a good job of checking his backside receiver with a one-on-one -on -one route. He knows he missed him. He had him open, had the matchup he wanted, and just get the ball got away from him. That's the types of throws you'll see, though, in this type of weather. Ball's a little bit slicker. It definitely affects your accuracy. Dawson Zimmerman set to punt the ball. Jeremy Curley back at the 17 to return it. This will be the fourth punt for Clemson. Another good kick. Curley calls for the fair catch at the 22 yard line. So it's been all defense here in the third quarter. We'll step aside from Death Valley. 6.57 to go in our third quarter. Clemson has a 10 7 lead. It's a rainy day in Death Valley for the second consecutive week, but unlike last week against Boston College, no lightning delays yet, although we are under a lightning advisory. You can see the rain coming down, and you can see our, our broadcast position. Eric Toms, the CEO of the Orange Bowl Committee, he's the guy in the orange jacket, checks in with us for a little bit on this drive. <laughs> Eric, what's your impression of the game thus far? Great game. Uh, it's early in the season, but you have two teams here that are going to be a factor, and uh, we expected a close game, and it is. On first down, the handoff goes to Joseph Turner, and Turner fights for, for maybe three yards. Well, let me ask you, as far as the beginning of the college football season goes, it's early in the season. How do you decide where you want to be? Like you said, it's early in the season, and, you know, there's a lot of cross-conference play going on. And, and this is a game right here where you have uh, two you know, programs that are going to be in the mix, as I said earlier. And... You know, we want to be out there. We're tied to the Atlantic Coast Conference. We go to the campuses in September, and uh, we circle this game. It's a big one. Gain of a yard, second and nine. Quarterback keeper, and that has worked all day for TCU, and it clicks again for a first down all the way out to the 37-yard line, a gain of 14. Boy, Dalton has been a force running the football. He really has. I mean, we talked about how he's come of age as a runner, and he just continues to press me the way, you know, the – the game has changed here with the weather. They're not going to be able to throw the ball as effectively as they did in the first half. And to have that advantage, your quarterback to be able to make plays with his legs, that could be the difference maker in this game. But Kyle Parker can do some things with his legs too, so we'll see if Clemson adapts. Dalton, 11 rushes, 60 yards. Dalton to throw. Pass is caught. Out of bounds, 44-yard line. And Ryan Christian pulls in the football. And TCU tries a variety of ways to get him involved in the offense. He's a versatile performer. He can, he can run it. He can catch the ball out of the, the backfield. Or if, if they opt to, line him up as a, a wideout. And They've got a lot of guys like that. They really utilize a lot of their players. They're more athletes instead of saying it's a wide receiver or running back. They're just football players. Ball's loose. A botched handoff between Dalton and Ed Wesley, and Dalton was able to get on it. And that's the risk you run when the weather starts getting wet, the ball gets slippery, and you start working those ball fakes, or you really stick it in the running back's belly. That's when you have to make sure you secure it. And anytime you put the ball on the ground, you know, it creates these types of situations where now it's third and six instead of third and one or two, and, or maybe it would, have, would have even had a first down. Three of eight, third down efficiency today for TCU. Dalton with good protection. And that pass is caught. Wow, put that in traffic. And Bart Johnson came up with the ball at the marker. It's a first down for the Horn Frogs at the 49. And Dalton, what an impressive throw right here. Gives a little play action to suck the linebackers up. And Bart Johnson runs a great route. DeAndre McDaniel, number two, the safety, is right there in coverage. But truly, what that's all about right there is there is no defense for a perfectly thrown ball. And that's exactly what that was right there. Well, they needed six. They got seven. Johnson came into play today as the leading receiver for TCU. First and ten. Ball near midfield. A hitch and go in and out of the hands of his intended receiver down at the 15-yard line. Trying to get that ball in there. And the reception couldn't be pulled in by Jimmy Young. 
Well, Jimmy Young's their big play receiver. He's got both touchdowns for Andy Dalton this year. Mm. Just runs straight vertically up the field. And really, TCU, they pick their shots. They, they kind of wait, set things up. And right there, they had a one-on-one -on -one matchup. What they wanted, they had Cody Sensible on number 15 in coverage. And in these types of situations with the weather like this, you got to really focus on the ball and look it in. Second and 10. Protection breaks down. Here goes Dalton on the run. And he sends this one out of bounds, so a third down coming. I would imagine, Eric, when you come out and, and see teams, you're the most popular guy in town. Because <laughs> everybody wants to play in the Orange Bowl. Yeah. Well, it's a great uh, job that I have. And, uh, you know, the best thing about college athletics and college football in particular is the relationships and the camaraderie between institutions and bowl games affect my man. Standing to my right here, Danny Cannell is a member of the Orange Bowl Committee. So uh, we're very appreciative to visit with the athletic departments of both institutions. Dalton, 13 to 22, 174 yards and a touchdown. TCU needs 10. Dalton to Johnson. He's got the first down. It, give him forward progress. He's still spinning up near the Clemson 38. So Johnson with a couple of clutch possession catches on this drive. Well, Dalton and Bart Johnson have seemed to found a little rhythm here in the third quarter, and they continue to find him. When they need a first down in a third down situation, they keep going to him. And you can see right here, Bart Johnson has a great feel for where the open space is in the defense. And a lot of guys have that. You see, it's like a Wes Welker type guy who, who just knows how to get open. That's your, that's your quarterback's best friend right there. Getting late third quarter. TCU with the best opportunity to score here since halftime, but Ross Evans... Missed a 42-yard field goal that would have tied the game. Dalton, the keeper, runs into his own man. And that blows the play up. Eric, you've been to a lot of venues around the country. You've seen some of the best stadiums out there. How does this Clemson facility, Death Valley experience, rank with yeah. the rest of the country? It's amazing. I mean, it's, it's part of the fabric of South Carolina the state of South Carolina and uh, you know you see a lot of facilities in what we do and this is this is as comparable as I've seen anywhere uh, a lot of enthusiasm passion in the fan base and uh, just a great game great atmosphere two double stack wide receivers on second and seven Johnson in motion Dalton throwing again the pass is caught by Johnson a short gain, a gain of only two yards. And another big third down coming. And that time the Clemson defense said, all right, Bart Johnson, you've done enough. Let's make sure we get somebody on you. And you see number 29, Xavier Brewer, is all over it. Because there comes a point when a guy beats you so many times, all of a sudden he's going to have a target on his back. So make sure you follow him wherever he is. 11th play of the drive coming up. TCU 5 of 10 on third down. Christian in motion. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Flag is down, maybe holding the throw. Pass is caught. And it's a first down at the 19 yard line by Jeremy Keeley. But we'll see, Curly, if this one, we'll see if it's going to stand. Two flags are down. Holder, offense number 72, 10 yards, penalty, repeat third down. That would go against the left guard, Kyle Dooley. And you can see Kyle right there, number 72, just gets a little jersey right there. And Tolton did a great job of evading pressure and making the play downfield. And I'm sure Dooley will get an earful after the game for that one. But that's one thing, Kevin Steele, you saw him dial up the blitz there. They'd already had a couple third down conversions on longer yarded situations where Dalton was able to get comfortable in the pocket. So Kevin Steele said, all right, I've seen enough of that. Let me send some linebackers and get in his, get in his mindset a little bit. Third and 17. Dalton avoids one tackle. And he goes out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So after this long drive in terms of number of plays run, TCU apparently going to punt the football. The punt team is coming on. And time off the clock, too. They were able to use a lot of the clock there. And 
I think it's really going to be a field position. Whoever plays smarter, you know, whoever, whoever makes the least mistakes. And Dalton there did a good job, couldn't get the first down, just got what he could, got out of bounds, and said, hey, let's kick it away. Good job by the TCU special teams unit. Fair catch called for. Boy, and on a rainy day, that is so dangerous. Spiller has it at the 17. That's where Clemson will have. They'll start this drive with under 90 seconds to play third quarter. The rain keeps coming down. TCU's BCS hopes hanging in the balance. They trail by three in Death Valley. Clemson's got the football back. They lead 10-7, a minute 23 to go in our third quarter. And we want to thank Eric Toms, the CEO of the Orange Bowl Committee, for, for coming up and getting out of the rain at least for a couple of moments and spending some time with us. Yeah, Don't you wish you had a little bit of the orange poncho <laughs> concession today? Yeah, that's what football is all about. And uh, it'll be a great game. I appreciate the opportunity to come here, and uh, we'll see how this thing wraps up. It has definite BCS implications. Eric, best of luck to you, and best of luck to the Orange Bowl this year. Thank you so much. First down, Spiller to the 20 yard line. Give him three. It'll be second down and seven. Well, we thought this one would be tight. It definitely has been that. Tigers with only 16 total yards after halftime. Clemson has watched TCU control the football. And the time of possession since halftime, but the Horn Frogs have been frustrated on two drives into Clemson territory. Trying to throw a little screen back to Spiller, and that ball slipped through his hands. Don't know if the rain affected it, but it's affecting a lot of things now. I think absolutely. You've seen Kyle Parker misfire in a couple throws right there. Ball came at, squirted out a little bit, but hit his receiver right in the hands. Got to make the catch. This is where you really have to focus that much more on every little aspect of the game. You really have to look the ball in. Third and seven. And this is a big down. That Clemson defense starting to get worn down a little bit, and they just got off the field. And Parker's got to be careful. He doesn't try to force anything, because I know he's probably getting frustrated they're not able to move the ball. There's a deep handoff to Spiller. And Spiller is dragged down at the 24-yard line, and that's going to bring the punt team back on for Clemson. And, you know, I just mentioned how, you know, Kyle Parker has to be, you know, concerned and, and careful with the football. And that's where the coordinator, Billy Napier and Dabo Sweeney, say, hey, look, let's not even put him in that, op in that position to make a mistake. Let's just be a little bit conservative. Let's play that ball position, field position game. And the way their defense is playing, they're starting to get after TCU's offense. TCU's moving the ball, but they're not able to score. So, hey, let's just play smart football here. Let the clock run out for the quarter and uh, take it to the first, fourth quarter. Yeah, you got it called right. Dabo Sweeney is going to wait until the first play of the fourth quarter to punt this ball away. And you can see Dabo signaling, hey, it's time for the fourth quarter. That's our quarter in Death Valley. We'll see about that. TCU set to receive a punt to start the fourth. But Clemson's got the lead as we head to the final period. One of the stories of the game inside the game this afternoon has been TCU's ability to really hold down the explosive special teams of Clemson and Dan Sharp. He's a special teams coach. He's done his job. He's done a great job. Anytime you got guys like CJ Spiller and Jacoby Ford back there, you know, he's done a great job of containing those two amazing athletes. Relatively short kick taken at the 40 yard line and stepping up to the 45. That is where TCU will start it. A 35-yard punt, five-yard return by Jeremy Curley. And now when you start talking about it being a field position type game, all of a sudden TCU is starting to creep up where they're starting their drives. You know, here they're starting at their own 45, and they're getting very close to Kemp Clemson's territory. So that could be a factor in this game. Well, time of possession has been a category in which TCU has dominated nationally number one last year in the top 20 again this year and today on the road a six minute advantage 25 to 19 in terms of minutes and Wesley bounces forward and appears to have the first down at the Clemson 45 and you can start seeing too at this point in the game you've got fresh legs at running back because Ed Wesley has been able to split snaps. He's been able to get some rest. You got Joseph Turner, who's still available for you there as well. 
He comes into the game now fresh. You see there, Ed Wesley's done a great job. But now he gets to go over and catch a breather, and you put a fresh one in there. 16 first downs now for TCU. Across the 40. And that's another nice gain of about six yards on the carry for Joseph Turner. And Turner's not getting those big numbers like he did last week against Texas State, but you wouldn't expect that against a, a stout defense like Clemson, especially here in Death Valley. No, and as long as he gets these positive plays, you know, he, right there, he picked up seven yards. That's a great play on first down. Now you've got a lot of options on second down and three. You know, you can, you can do a lot of different things here. You can take a shot at the end zone if you want. Rain pelting down, probably raining as heavy now as it has all afternoon. Second and three. Here comes the blitz. TCU crosses him up with a running play. And Matthew Tucker, the freshman from Tyler. Well, there you go. There's the third guy in the committee. Number 29, Matthew Tucker. He comes in. Now you see him running off the field. They got Wesley coming back in, number 34. So all these guys, they're fresh right now, and that can start taking a toll on a defense. You saw him, the way he ran the ball, he delivered a blow right there at the end of his run. That's a 10-yard gain. And maybe a power north and south rushing attack may be just what the doctor ordered for TCU as the rain continues to come down. And the quarterback is tripped up as he reaches the 25-yard line. So right now, TCU is in field goal range. Three-yard gainer for Andy Dalton. And when you looked at this game, too, you knew it was going to be a team that would come down to whoever was physically tougher. And both teams have played very tough football today. But at this point in the game, TCU is kind of taking advantage of that. They're starting to manhandle the Clemson defense a little bit. They're starting to get those positive runs every play. Clemson's defense has bent here since halftime, but they have not broken. Dalton going to send this one inside the 10. Pass is caught. Touchdown, TCU. A battle all the way down to the goal line for the touchdown catch. Antoine Hicks pulls it in. Frogs back in front. What a battle for that football. Well, there you go. Andy Dalton takes his shot. As a second down, you can take a shot at the end zone. Antoine Hicks is right up one-on-one -on -one there against Byron Maxwell. Just does a great job. We talked about it being a physical game. Right here, he was more physical than number 36, Byron Maxwell. He fights for the ball just a little bit harder. So TCU's back in front for the first time here in the second half. Extra point is upcoming, and this play will be reviewed. Antoine Hicks, the sophomore from Arlington, originally signed with the Texas Longhorns, made his way to TCU. He had his first touchdown last week, yep. looking to get his second already. That was a tremendous individual play. And this is just a one-on-one. -on -one. You run these drills every day in practice. Look at the focus and concentration. The ball is bouncing around his body, but he actually pins it. It looks like he pins it against Maxwell there and ends up hanging on. The ball, I don't think, ever hit the ground. I think this is going to stand. Plus, and, it was called a touchdown. And this juggle carries into the end zone. But the ball never hits his ground. He keeps it on his hip and is able to control it at the end. That ball is flopping around on his hip, but the replay that we're looking at now, it doesn't appear as if the, the ball ever touches the ground. And look at the official's vantage point. He's right there, right out to the, to the end zone pylon. For touchdown. Hicks lost that ball and somehow regained it. And TCU is back in front. What a great game we've had tonight. Unbelievable. And Hicks just did a great job there of fo focusing till the last second of the play, making sh sure he secured the football all the way until the very end, until the whistle was blown and he had secured the touchdown. Johnson is the holder. Evans. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Snakes it in just inside the left upright. And... TCU leads 14-10. Frogs led 7-3 until late in the first half when C.J. Spiller scored a one-yard touchdown run. That's our first score since halftime. Antoine Hicks, huge play in this game. TCU has got a 14-10 lead at Clemson.
Well, Antoine Hicks wanted to take his helmet off and tell everybody on the sidelines about his first career touchdown catch, but no time. He's on the kickoff team. <laughs> He's right back there. They put him to work right away. And you saw he had his first rushing touchdown last week. Hey, why not add another one to your resume and get a, a receiving touchdown as well? Clay's touchdown catch in the first half was his first career grab as well. Spiller from the four-yard line. Oh, a beautiful cutback. And he takes it out near the 25-yard line, make it the 24. Boy, C.J. Spiller having a little trouble coming off the field here. He's got a little grass in his helmet. He's having trouble seeing now. 21-yard kickoff return. Still plenty of time to go in this game. 12 and a half minutes. Plenty of time, but they haven't been able to move the ball much here in the second half. So they need to create some positive momentum here for their direction. They need to get some good plays. Parker under center to start this drive. No play action this time. Bull rush up the middle. Incomplete. There was a rusher right in the face of Parker. And he threw that ball incomplete. And that was a good rush right up the middle by Corey Grant, the nose tackle. And you see Corey Grant just coming straight up the middle of the middle of the offense. And that was really the offensive line for Clemson. That's their strength. With Mason Cloy, number 62, their center, and Thomas Austin, number 65, their guard. I mean, that's what Dabo Sweeney had said. That was the strength of their offensive line. But Corey Grant just physically beat them that time. Second down and 10. From the gun this time is Parker. Handoff. Trying to get the, the football. And Daniels is able to close the play down. And Jamie Harper. I think TCU came offside. Defense huh? number 98. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, most pass rushers are great getting off the football. They're great at timing the snap. And unfortunately, that time he just was trying to time it a little bit too much and just got a little bit of a jump on the start on the snap. Seven penalties, 68 yards now against the Horned Frogs. Second down and five. Spiller's been the workhorse, 19 carries and then additional duty. There's carry number 20. Oh, great cut inside. He's got the first down and more. He's out across the 40 to the 42-yard line. That's a gain of 13 and a Tiger first down. Well, when you see number five, Rendrick Taylor, come into motion, you should expect them to run something his way. He's been the blocking fullback that kind of leads the way for C.J. Spiller. And C.J. Spiller does such a great job of just that little, just a little cut up there inside. Really caught number 43, Tank Carter, on his heels there. And when it's wet like that, it's easy to lose your balance, especially when you're trying to tackle a guy like Spiller. Oh, absolutely. One of the nation's elite players. Carter lost his footing. He was right in the path but couldn't make the cut. C.J. was just gone. Spiller again. Again, he's got room to the corner. It's a race. And the angle knocks him out of bounds. That was a touchdown saving tackle. And it's all Spiller right now. It's money time for Clemson. Well, TCU has a running back by committee, but tonight the whole committee for Clemson is CJ Spiller because right now it is a one man show. And you're seeing a whole lot of number 28 for Clemson's offense. That's 34 yards on the gainer. Coming back to the live action. Spiller again. Down into the red zone. And I know Mel Kuyper has C.J. Spiller very high on his board as far as senior running backs. And tonight he is making a statement for those NFL scouts because they want to see toughness. They want to see who guy who plays hurt. They want to see who guy who breaks tackles. And they want to see a guy who makes big plays, and C.J. Spiller does all those things. Spiller, 22 carries now, 118 yards. Second down and three. C.J.'s off the field for the moment. Again, they keep it on the ground. Jamie Harper. So Harper gets a turn. And third down, upcoming for Clemson. And Spiller comes back into the game. Jamie Harper comes in there number eight for one play to give Spiller a, a quick breather, but he's right back out there. And it's a, a crucial third down here. They need to get closer, I think. They've had their red zone struggles, but 
they can still get a pretty positive run here get enough for the on the ground those 22 carries that's a career high for cj spiller third and three tcu fakes the blitz incomplete passes tipped nearly intercepted tj johnson had it for a moment and now it's fourth down and the field goal unit is coming on for Clemson. I was a little surprised there they went with the empty backfield because that really alerts the defense that you're not going to run it. So TCU dialed up the blitz, but both their inside linebackers, Kyle Parker, had to throw his hot route, threw it to his tight end, and couldn't make the play because it was pretty good defense. Kyle Parker struggled here a little bit. I think the weather has had something to do with it. Uh, this, the ball's been a little bit slick, and unfortunately... He hasn't been able to be as accurate with his passing. Here's Jackson. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And the kick is no good. He missed it. Missed it just wide as that ball broke away from the post. And after all that work on that drive by Spiller, Clemson comes up empty. High snap. Another look. A little high, but the ball was down when it was there. And... You know, there's a guy, Richard Jackson, he had such a great week last week. You would think he'd be money from where he is and a rare miss for Richard Jackson. But it could be a very key miss because now they're going to need a touchdown. Skinner with a high snap. Clemson misses the field goal. TCU has the ball and the lead when we come back. Horn Frogs with the football. 9.58 to go. Fourth quarter. Rain coming down in Death Valley at Memorial Stadium. Glad you could join us exclusively on ESPN 360 for this one. Dave Weekly, Danny Cannell. Thankfully, we're out of the rain. But the fans in the stands, it doesn't seem to matter. It's been a tremendous college football game. Yeah, that missed field goal might have deflated the offense a little bit, but not the fans. Dalton again on the keeper. This continues to work for TCU. It's a first down up to the 33-yard line. A gain of 13. And Dalton has just worked this option to perfection all day long. You see Bowers there. He saw number 93, took the back. Dalton said, all right, I'll turn it upfield. And it's just those little subtle fakes, those little subtle misdirection that keep your – if you get that split second where you can freeze that defensive end and you can get upfield, once you get past him to that next level, you can get a lot of yardage after that. Boy, this Clemson defense has been on the field an awful lot here in the second half. Clemson trying to hold their opponent – under 16 points or less for the fourth straight game. They've done that so far, but they trail on the scoreboard. Handoff goes to Joseph Turner. That's his 10th carry of the game. Minimal gain, pickup of maybe two. And there's Ricky Sapp from Bamberg, South Carolina. Played such a big game last week against Boston College. Has really come all the way back after a torn ACL last year against UVA. And he's, he's had three monster games to start the season, but he's been relatively quiet tonight. You know, this is a point where somebody for the Clemson defense needs to come up with a, a game-changing turnover, something positive for this defense to kind of get the momentum back in your direction. We're talking about a defensive end who runs the 100-yard, 100-meter dash in 10 7 6. Not that time for Dalton on the keeper. Brandon Thompson, the defensive tackle from Thomasville, Georgia, there to make the staff. Stop, third down coming up. And he just saw Brandon Thompson, number 98, just with a simple swim move right around the offensive line that was able to get in the backfield. That's one way to stop that option attack. You know, his nickname is Yams. One look at him and you can understand <laughs> why. It's loud in Death Valley. Let's see if Clemson tries to dial up some blitz to get some pressure. Faking the blitz. Snap is bobbled. A flag is down. It looked like the right side of the TCU line moved. And this is a big call right here. They're talking about whether it was defense offsides or whether the offense moved. Part, part of the smash, full star, offense number 61, still third time. The right tackle, Marcus Cannon. You can't miss well, him, he's 6'5", 350. Well, I think they caught a break there, Clemson, because they had 
Bowers was coming in there to blitz, to get after the quarterback. But Cannon saw him coming there, just flinched just enough. If he stays still there, that's an offsides on Clemson. Third and 12. TCU needs their own 43. Dalton, flags are down. This is going to go against TCU again. And this time it looked to be the left tackle, Newhouse. Part of the snap, ball starts. Offense number 7 0. Five yard penalty, still third down. Well, we thought maybe the rain would quiet down this crowd a little bit. But no way. <laughs> they have picked up the slack here. They have not given up on this Clemson team, and they've really come to the aid of the Clemson defense because you can see the struggles that the offensive line is having. Penalties, nine of them against TCU for 78 yards. Third and 17. Empty set. Dalton with good protection. The pass is caught. Christian trying to get some room, and he will not get the first down, but he takes it out to the 40-yard line. That's a gain of 14. So that'll help with the field position. He got a lot of yards on that play, too. <laughs> See Clemson just playing simple prevent defense, keep everybody in front of you, come up and make the tackle. But right there, that little move he made right there picked him up seven or eight yards, and he almost was able to stretch for the first down. Well, you got to put that ball in your right hand, especially on a wet yeah, day. At this point in the game, too, when you're talking about being able to pin Clemson back. Double trouble back for Clemson, <laughs> Spiller and Ford. I would be surprised if this ball stays in bounds. Kelton, high kick. Taken at the 25-yard line by Ford. Well, they were able to do it with the hang time there. Take those returners out of the game with a good punt. Getting down to cases in Death Valley. Clemson's got the ball, but they trail 14-10. Gary Patterson is never really ever satisfied, but he's got to be pleased with the fact that his team's got the lead despite all the miscues in this game. Helmet to helmet contact. That cost the Frogs 15. Mishandled snap. Run it into their own offensive lineman. Holding penalties. 78 yards in penalties for the Frogs to this point. Back-to-back -back penalties on that last drive. And here come the Tigers. They need a touchdown to take the lead. C.J. Spiller, who's already set a career record in terms of carries, gets the ball, and he has swarmed under in the backfield. Nowhere to go. Corey Grant, the junior from Houston, led the way, and that's a loss of nearly five. And the TCU defense starting to step it up a notch, getting after C.J. Spiller, not letting him go anywhere. Bunch of jerseys there, but we talked, we, we showed the clips with the miscues, and, you know, you can say TCU, they've still moved the ball down the field, but... The thing those miscues have done is you haven't been able to deliver that knockout blow. You've let Clemson hang around a little bit, and Clemson still has a chance very much in this game. Rain keeps pelting down. We're under a lightning advisory here in Clemson, South Carolina, for at least another 15 minutes. Hopefully we'll be able to get this game played. Pass is complete up to the 25-yard line. Ford makes the reception. That's his fifth catch of the day. And... Daryl Washington is going to be one tired linebacker after this game. He has put it all out there today for TCU. He has, and he's an incredible linebacker. He's got the type of skills that can get him to the next level. Nine tackles. The guy has been all over the field tonight. You know all about the BCS implications. BYU and Utah were losers last week out of the Mountain West. TCU, this is their top remaining non-conference game before they get in the league play. Parker running, pass is caught, 40. And Spiller, and guess who? <laughs> he just does everything. He has boundless amounts of energy. Well, on a third down and 10 there, most of the defense was getting back. The receivers were out deep in their routes. Watch from the left side of your screen, number 28, C.J. Spiller right there. He's just coming on a simple crossing route. He's Kyle Parker's last option. TCU just kind of lost him in the wash, and he comes out wide open. That was a very easy first down. 15-yard gain. And Kyle Parker does a good job working away from Jerry Hughes. Hey, I would be too. <laughs> Parker, the play action. Here's the throw. Nearly picked off. 
at the 40 yard line. Ford fell down. TJ Johnson had the coverage, and that pass, frankly, was up for grabs. It was. Jacoby Ford there just slipped a little bit. And what you saw right here is Clemson defense taking a shot for the touchdown. They just had that big third down pickup. Say, hey, let's try to capitalize on that momentum. Jacoby Ford just unfortunately lost his footing a little bit there, started falling down where he didn't even have a chance to catch the ball. That was actually Raphael Priest on the coverage for TCU. Second and ten. Spiller. And he can't get away. And Hughes drags him down. Hughes doesn't have the the gaudy sack numbers today, but they'll take that every time. Well, it's and Clemson's and done a good job of game planning for him, but here he comes up, is able to fend off a couple offensive linemen. One there, 65. Thomas Austin is an NFL type prospect. He shook, shook him right aside and was able to get to the back. Two tackles for Hughes today. But Third let me tell and you, ten. He still makes a difference in the game. Seven of 15 on third down. Parker is able to control a bad snap. Here comes the rush. Incomplete at the 30-yard line. And finally a flag. Ford undercut by Priest. And that's going to be a first down for Clemson. And what a break for Clemson. Because there was nothing there on that play. Kyle Parker had trouble with the snap. Last one first. Defense number 10. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And what a huge break. Right here, Kyle Parker with the snap, fumbles it, the ball slick. He does a great job of keeping his composure. Looking downfield, it's third and ten, you have nothing open. Hey, let's take a shot. It's the same as a punt. And what can happen? You get a pass interference. Hey, Just a hair too early. He came back to the football. And Spiller... Knocked down after a gain of maybe half a yard. Both teams now, all their timeouts. You see the rain just coming down in sheets here in Clemson right now. And unfortunately, the Clemson offense, their running game has been pretty non-existent on this drive. They can't afford to keep having those third downs and tens because you're not going to get the types of breaks you've been getting. TCU closing in on 100 yards in penalties today. Second down and nine. We're under, three minute, we're under four minutes to go now. Parker flushed. Still running, throwing on the move. Pass is caught. First down and more. Flag is down. Back at the 45-yard line. This may be coming back. Line of scrimmage is the 25-yard line. Jerron Brown, the freshman, came back to the football. Here's the call. Illegal formation on the offense. Five in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Oh. What a heartbreaking penalty for this Clemson offense. Because that was a great individual effort by Kyle Parker. Six penalties, 49 yards for Clemson today. And they've had... Daniels in hot pursuit. Second and 14. The blitz coming down the middle of the field. Pass is caught. It's Ford. And Ford is dragged down from behind. Horse collar call coming. He's down at the 26-yard line. And tack on some penalty yards. And earlier it was C.J. Spiller putting the team on his back. Now it's Kyle Parker. Personal foul, horse collar, number 28 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first foul. That will go against Colin Jones. And what an effort by Kyle Parker. What's the first thing they tell a quarterback? Don't throw against your body. But if you complete it for a huge first down, you can go ahead and do it. Jacoby Ford there, picking up a huge first down. And Kyle Parker has been running around, gets hit in the mouth right there by Darrell Washington, number 41, but he continues to make plays. I mean, he had a first down before that when they had the illegal formation call. But so, he's keeping plays alive, it's, and the longer those defensive backs have to cover the receivers, 
the more opportunity is for them to get open because it's very tough to hang with these speed guys. Jacoby Ford can absolutely fly out there. First down and 10, 13 yard line. Clock running, closing in on three minutes to go, fourth quarter. Single back set. Here comes you know who, Spiller. Oh, and look at all the white jerseys. He's dropped for a loss back at the 16 yard line. Well, Great penetration by Wayne Daniels. And TCU is starting to get a lot more guys in the box because that CJ Spiller ate him up there on the drive previous to this one. So they're going to say, you know what? Spiller, you're not going to beat us. We're going to make Kyle Parker beat us. He's the young, he's the freshman quarterback. It's wet out. It's hard to throw the football. We're not going to let you guys beat us running the football. Look at those all purpose yards for Spiller. We weren't sure he'd be able to be 100% today. He may not be 100%, but he's answering the bell in a huge game for Clemson. Under two and a half to play now. Parker, play action. Sending this one to the end zone. Incomplete. He had Dwayne Allen down the seam and overshot him. And that was a great play call right there by Billy Napier. It was open. He had the, the matchup they wanted with Dwayne Allen against the linebacker. And watch the stick move he makes right at the top of his route, right there. Just enough hesitation to create some separation. And unfortunately, the ball just flew just a little bit. Kyle Parker had it. And if he could have that throw back, man, he would love to have it. But the balls are wet. It is tough to be accurate with it. Clemson needs the TCU three for a first down. Five of 12 on third down conversions. TCU defense has been oh so tough in the red zone. Parker from the gun. Here comes the rush. Flushed. Still looking. Still looking. Fires. Pit tip and nearly intercepted. Jones nearly got that ball. It's incomplete and it's fourth down and 13. So if you're Dabo Sweeney now, do you take the field goal attempt here? You've got all three of your timeouts. And this is just a great coverage play by the T TCU defense. Kyle Parker's trying to make a play. He knows he needs a touchdown. Running around looking for a play. And look at who, who made the play. Number 41, Daryl Washington. Got a hand in there just in time to break it up. All right, so Clemson is going to take a timeout here to think about it. And well, it looks is, like the offense is going to stay on the field. But, Danny, you know, you could take <laughs> three here. It's raining cats and dogs. You could still try to get that ball back. But now it's going to be tougher because you burned one of your timeouts. Right. I think they're going to try to take a shot here. I mean, the way TCU's offense has been moving the ball, it's going to be real tough to get the ball back. And here, you take a shot at the end zone. If you don't get it, you still got them pinned back there, and you try to do it again and just get another touchdown instead of a field goal. Both of these teams were unsuccessful on a fourth down conversion in our first half. And this is a long fourth down conversion. It's not yeah. like it's going to be an easy call. So I would expect a lot of TCU defenders to be back around the goal line, keep everything in front of them, knock everything down. This is one of those moments, those turnaround moments in a college football season. And you Fourth can see TCU's 13. defense. Look at the umbrella coverage right there around the, the, the five-yard line. you got two safeties behind them. Just keep the ball in front of them. Parker. Flushed. Here comes the rush. End zone. Incomplete. Pass was incomplete. And TCU takes over on downs. That was a low percentage play on fourth and 13. They burned a timeout to get the right play in the game. And the Horn Frogs are able to successfully defend it. Well, TCU's defense is exactly what we thought they would. They just played in the end zone, played for the touchdown. Basically, what it turned into was a Hail Mary. I mean, Kyle Parker did his job. He didn't get sacked. He gave a chance in the end zone. And then maybe you get a pass interference or you get some kind of lucky ball that gets tipped. But TCU got to give them credit, too. They did their job. The pass was intended for Mark Juan Jones. He has not caught a pass all day. Colin Jones had the coverage for TCU. Now the Horn Frogs, they've got the ball. They've got the lead. A minute 55 to go. Quarterback keeper across the 20 and out beyond the 22-yard line. And that has worked for Dalton. That's his 18th carry of the game. Well, all day, Dalton has just worked the defensive ends. 
all day long. All he's doing is reading the defensive end, and there he had 93, number 93, Daquan Bowers again, bit after the back, the back. Because at this point in the game, if you're a defender, you're thinking, all right, they're going to give it to their running backs and hammer the end of this game out. But Dalton says, I'll take it myself. Clemson not using a timeout after first down. But you can bet one will be coming here after second down. Less than 90 seconds to go in regulation. Quarterback keeper again. And Clemson calls timeout. In that time, Clemson's defense finally did get some penetration. That's the best way to stop it is your, your guys in the middle, your tackles, your D-tackles have got to get in there. Under Gary Patterson, they've won 53 of 54 when allowing 17 or less. And Horn Frogs fans who are watching this realize what that other game was. It was the game against Utah last year. And Gary Patterson is a defensive-minded coach. He's done a spectacular job getting recruits into his program. And then when they get in there, he puts them in the right position. How about Jerry Hughes? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, was not even a defensive end in high school. TCU is replacing Central Michigan on Clemson's schedule. They're getting a million dollars for this game. Normally, when you get a payday like that for a one-and-done, you get a win or a check. Normally you don't get both and that's what TCU is trying to do today here in Death Valley a minute 18 to go Tigers with one timeout Horn Frogs facing third and four a first down here and this game is over The handoff to Wesley and he is dragged down from behind that's a good open field tackle for Clemson Chris Chancellor who was off the field for quite a while in the first half makes the stop and Clemson has burned their last time out. So the Tigers are going to get the ball back with over a minute to go. And with a possible punt return set up here. So Kyle Parker will get a chance to make some plays. He's been doing a great job, but without the luxury of any timeouts here, it's going to be tough duty. And when TCU punts this ball away, there you see the numbers today for the Clemson special teams unit. And the thing that's been surprising to me is they have kicked it to Jacoby Ford and C.J. Spiller. They All haven't been day. afraid of them. No. All day. And that's just another tribute to Dan Sharp, the special teams coach of TCU. He's done a great job preparing his team for these athletes, getting them ready to cover. And this will be one of the biggest coverage kicks they'll have right here. But Kyle Parker will get the ball in pretty good field position. Kelton set to boot it away. TCU's defense, which has kept Clemson off the scoreboard here in the second half, going to have to do it one more time. And it rolls out of bounds at the 43-yard line. So Clemson has good field position to start this drive. 63 seconds to go in our fourth quarter. A 36-yard punt, no return. And how big was the missed field goal oh. earlier? I mean, that's, you know, Richard Jackson's a great field goal kicker. He's been spectacular. But in these conditions, it makes the kicker's job tough, too. And now, instead of having to go down in the previous drive as well, instead of taking a field goal, you're first forced to go for the touchdown. Both teams have missed field goals here in the second half. 57 yards for Kyle Parker to lead his team down the field. Clemson needs a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. Parker. Down the seam, passes in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Ball knocked away from Terrence Ash. Second down and 10. And those are the types of plays you just have to make. Kyle Parker does a good job throwing on rhythm. They ran a skinny post right there, and Terrence Ash had the ball right in the bread bath, but You've got to make those catches. Fine play. Nick Sanders stripped him of the ball. Second down and 10. You see Parker, he's really struggled here in the second half for the game. 16 of 35, 130, 183 yards. Parker again looking. Throwing. And that pass is going to be caught. That's a nine-yard gain. And it might have been better if it was incomplete because now they've really got to get up to the ball and start playing with a real sense of urgency here. And that's Ash. He came right back to Terrence Ash. Third and a yard. And the ball's loose. 
It's on the ground, and it's fourth down. And they got to hurry because they can't kill it. It's fourth down, so you've got to run a play. No timeouts for Clemson. Clock is winding down. We're down to 15 seconds. Got to convert on fourth and eight. We're inside of 10 seconds to go in the game. Parker cranks it up. Incomplete. Two seconds remain. And at the bottom of that pile, Marquand Jones nearly came <laughs> up with that football for Clemson. And it's unfortunate in this situation they had to throw for the end zone with the miscue on third down. They were put in this position where they had to run a Hail Mary. But look at Mark Rand Jones, Jones sitting back there waiting for the tip ball. Has an opportunity, almost gets his hands underneath it. So the ball goes over on downs. What a tremendous defensive-minded game. Played mo most of the second half in a driving rainstorm. TCU is going to get out of Death Valley with a huge non-conference win. And Coach Gary Patterson is still coaching right there. It doesn't matter. They just had the victory. There you go. A tremendous game. And the fans who made the trip over from Fort Worth, the Metroplex, hey, it was worth the journey. Dabo Sweeney, Gary Patterson meet at the middle of the field. Two touchdown passes by Dalton. Both first-time touchdown catches. First by Curtis Clay in the first half. Antoine Hicks in the second half, 14-10, our final. Danny Cannell, final thoughts. Well, hey, TCU came in here. They wanted to gain a little respect nationally. They're going to do it. They're going to continue to rise in the, in the polls because they came in, placed a tough Clemson team on the road, and came out with an impressive win. TCU still alive in the hunt for an at-large BCS bid. A tremendous atmosphere here in Death Valley at Clemson tonight. TCU gets the victory. So for Danny Canal, I'm Dave Weekly saying so long from Clemson for the final score, 14-10 Horn Frogs over the Tigers. For an archived copy of this entire game, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to ESPN360.com. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.